There we now go to Jackson Goldstone, sister Bailey from Squamish, 21 years old, just about half an hour down the road. She's going to want something this afternoon, right, Trace? Yeah, I mean, you can see she has that fresh sleeve on. She won it for the second year in a row. She'll be stoked on being the current Canadian national champion. Right. I don't think she'll be any stranger to conditions like this, living just up the road and these dry, gnarly conditions. You know what? I think we'll see her really shine on a track like this. And it's insanely dry. The course, actually a couple of days ago, was in great condition. There's been no wheels on it, really, in those seven years. It's been in the making, and it has been torn apart by practice. Really, really dry conditions here. We're left with this holdout, beat-up track that is even gnarlier than what we expected, I would say. I mean, exactly. <laughs> you're, you're up in the rainforest, and just look how dry those conditions are. And it isn't a super dry place, so to see dry conditions like this is pretty unique, and I mean, it's definitely going to be a battle to get down the mountain today. Certainly is Goldstone then, up two and a half seconds at split number one, so on a good run. That little section there is one of the only, let's say, flatter sections that we're going to see on the whole track, and it is a section, um, I was speaking to the riders, it's very wide open, it's very bright, and when you come into this section, wow. it's so dark, and you're coming straight into those technical rock slabs. And we're now a bit further down the course, the lowest steep sections, where it is incredibly steep. It's Val de Sole steep. A lot of, a lot of people riders comparing the two tracks. In that middle section, then she gained 1.1, excuse me, 3.7 up at split number two. You can hear the crowd, the crowd made their way all the way. Look at I that mean, back wheel just locked. At Valdesol, I don't even think parts of Valdesol are as steep nope. as we're seeing today, even. This is an insane. It's Canadian. This is Canadian downhill and at its best. The free ride element's been thrown in there as well. It's making that bike look small, just how big and steep the, this track is. And you can see there, that's the Stevie Str Smith, excuse me, Red Bull drop, and apparently getting the speed to come into that, because you're coming out of that really tight yeah. technical section is quite difficult. Good few pedal strokes needed. 7.7 .7 up then. Now, probably the only part of the track where you might be able to relax for a second or two. Goldstone decided not to relax and get on those pedals before it drops away steep again. And as you said, Trace, national champion from just a week ago, won that in Fernie. Yeah, she'll be excited to be having that back on her jersey again. She's gone for the no gr gloves, which is curious because I always ride no gloves when I know the arm pump is going to be extra bad. Yeah. And the riders are saying, your arms are just struggling to hang on in the last section. Yeah, and this is that last section and last little wood now. She's going to come out of here into a right-hander and down to that finish line. Difficult left-hander there, though. Evers has squared off now. A tenth of round one. Excuse me, stop number one of the Crankworx World Tour in Rotorua Rota on the Rock Shocks. Tanifar downhill. So sprinting down to the line then. She should go fast this year by a good margin. Goldstone takes the hot seat, 4.52.9 is the time to be, put it into some perspective, it was Valentina Hull with a 4.14 in qualifying, though that is the time they've tried to match this afternoon, but Canada leading. Riders are saying the track is running a bit rougher, maybe a little bit slower, but I don't think it's running that much slower. But just look at the track. And we saw in Finn's course preview, you want to stay on Riders high left, which we saw you really struggle to get over there. <laughs> what are you saying, you know, Trace? To get that long entry into this next section. But even um, Elliot said that it was a difficult line to hold because we know he did give the track a go as well, he, Rob. Oh, yeah, he did. He had a few runs up there, I believe. No. Hey. <laughs> 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 but you're right, because as well as on that camber you're talking about, you're obviously trying to break as well, so everything yeah. is trying to just pull you down into that low line. OK, well, let's go down to Elliot, who's with Bailey. All right, well, this Bailey, Bailey Goldstone, Goldstone coming off of national Jonah. championships. How did that run feel? Oh, that was so wild. I got like halfway and I was like, I don't even feel my shoulders anymore, but we got to go. And I hit like almost every single line and I just was like, okay, just keep it upright, just stay safe, have fun most importantly. And I did that and I'm really happy with that. What does it feel like to ride a track like this in front of your home crowd? It's wild, like the whole way down, people are just yelling my name. I'm seeing my friends out of the corner of my eyes. All my family's here, 
much. It really means a lot. Thanks, Bailey. No worries. And brother Jackson still recovering from that uh, appendix. So Julia Long now, 5.09 in qualifying. Seven riders to go after this woman gets to the bottom then. Yeah, another rider on the forbidden bike on an enduro today, which wow. she's brave. I mean, honestly, she's brave. This track, we've spoken about how much of a downhill track it is. And taking an enduro bike to this track is pretty challenging. I do agree with you, Trace. Some of us have been brave enough to do it. There's the pressure she's running. 195 in the PSI and those rock shocks. I mean, when you see the holes, you want to be running that pressure as hard as absolutely possible. Absolutely. And, oh, well, see just how dusty it is down there, how deep it is. Yep, this woman splits her time actually between the downhill and the enduro bike, perhaps riding it because she feels more comfortable on it. Yeah, and I mean, it is it is good practice when you are predominantly racing enduro to bring your enduro bike to the downhill courses. I don't imagine it's super easy and you've got those massive jumps that she's opted to go around there. No surprises there. No, I can't blame her for that. I wouldn't either. Didn't you go around that one? <laughs> I walked to the end of it and then walked back. Yeah, you're right, I went around it. The Forbidden Bike Company actually coming from uh, really close here, just over on Vancouver Island on the Forbidden Plateau is where it gets its name. Oh, big curb stone of a rock there. She lets it go down there. So long. Holding on, she'll be glad things are going to smooth off now. She goes right here. Nice. That shows you how rough it is. It yeah. really does. If you're breaking down through these big holes, it's an uncomfortable ride. And she was holding that high line for a long time before she opted to cut in and go straight down the middle. But you can see just how rough it is to stay up on that left line. But she's gone inside there, which is a tricky, a sneaky little line because that outside looks like it's getting very blown out. Maybe seven seconds into the red at split number two. She won't be threatening Bailey Goldstone. Oh, let it go where she can, though. And right is saying, if you're prepared to get off the brakes in the lower steep sections, you know, a fraction earlier than everyone else, stay off those brakes a fraction longer. There is so much time you can make. I mean, you're either in and out of the holes or you're out and in the holes. So it's yeah. really about your brake and your timing to get those holes just right. And I imagine it's not easy on the arms. Bailey said she couldn't feel her shoulders anymore. Well, she's got a lot less trouble on her front suspension than Bailey has, so imagine yeah. how her arms are feeling. Clicks up the gears there, gets a good few power pedals in. A couple of different lines here. You'll see some riders coming off the top of that rock almost, which will give them a great line. That next little straight. Oh, look how hard out this course is. She definitely lets it go in those technical sections. Yeah. She seems to really like it when it gets gnarly and technical. And also oh, remember that she huge, is on that shorter travel that fork, Trace. That short. In that right hand, though, excuse me. No, it's good, but like, you know, the shorter travel bike will not be it helping. Be, yeah. Sometimes on downhills, short travel bike, you know, you can say it might work. Yeah, I'm going to say you got no chance, <laughs> right? <laughs> like it's a yeah, tall no, order. I totally agree. I, they have come so far that in this day yeah. and age, yes, you can get away with riding them. And, and the Enduro World Cups are pretty gnarly tracks, so you can switch it up. Long across the line. No, this is a special one. 12.5. Into the red, then anything built in the memory of Stevie Smith is going to be a fair challenge. It's going to be loose. It's going to be wild. It's going to be everything that Stevie was. And you know what, and how special that they have done that here. Yeah. Their goal was to build a track in tribute to him, and you know what, they've absolutely made it. They've smashed it. What they've built up there. A little bit of rain, and it would have been Stevie's favourite track, I imagine. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it would have always been unrideable but <laughs> for most. He does love the wet weather. That's right, he certainly does, yeah. Let's have a look at this section, then a few this different the lines section. here, riders. Yeah. We'll be trying to stay high, but, you know, it's difficult, Trace. The goal is to stay high, and even after you come around over this flat slab rock, you still want to be high, but, I mean, it is so hard to stay all the way out there that that is the next best option. And she really let it go in this section. You can get straight between those trees, but, gosh, it does look rough on that little travel bike, doesn't it? But she held it well. She really let it go in those technical sections. This was a great line going inside there because you can see just how deep and powdery it is on the outside down the bottom there. Well, the 11.99 living up to all expectations. Women's final here at Crankworks Whistler. Bailey Goldstone leads. 
There's Ainho Ozerko from Spain now. 5.05 in qualifying. From Spain, but she actually lives over here, Rob. She does live in Canada. She is going for the Canadian Cup overall, well, which I believe she is in the lead for right now. You can see she is riding in that Canadian Cup. I believe that might be the leader's jersey, yep. if I'm correct. Busy series, well-supported series that as well. They actually had one midweek this week, I believe. So the riders that raced the Canadian Nationals last weekend Whoa. went to a, another one for midweek. Yeah, they've had a hectic time this week. Yeah, Look at this, though. Nice and light over the holes there. Yeah, and you can see the difference between when they ride through the holes and when they're able to jump over go. and bump over yeah. the holes. And she is carrying good She goes for the sender off the Stevie Smith drop there. And the first woman to do it, it's massive. And so will with the time gain. She should carry Woo. a lot more speed onto this flat section now. Yeah, we said that is a big that is drop. a flat section. And if you can get speed into that, you're going to gain so much more momentum, especially going into this net next extremely steep technical section. And this is a section that is tricky. Oh, man, look at it. Carnage, where do you go? And look at all the people in there. 1.4 back at split number one then. So very much in touch for Ozerko. Around the outside there. Very good pace down there. Yeah, very good. She did enter quite low, right as right, and then just kind of held her line and committed oh, to her line. Well, really on the move then. So in second sector on this track, taking five and a half seconds. Our Bailey Johnson to find herself over four seconds up now. Good line down there, holds that inside. Gonna get off the brakes as quick as she can in that berm. And it's important, Trace, isn't it? The corner speed, because there are a lot of flats after so after a lot of these turns. Yes. Carry speed. I mean the braking, the braking on this track is, I would say, one of the key factors in being the fastest on this track. Not only for the holes that you could mistakenly break in or out of, but also you are coming into flat corners that you need exit speed out of. And look how loose it is. Yeah, it's it's not easy to hold speed oh. on a track like this. Nearly eight seconds up there now. So the Spanish rider on a massive run here. Spinning a low gear there, sat down. <laughs> if I was nearly eight seconds up, I'm not sure I'd be taking my hands off the bars. I'd be pinning it, but she's having a good time. I mean, she's still pinning it. She's You're right. letting the bike go. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Loving these steep sections out of the open now. This off-camber right-hander. Yeah, I bet it is exciting to see that right-hander coming up, Ooh. knowing that you only have one technical section before you reach that finish line and it is still tricky you can see it's off that rock slab off camera but it is the last technical before you get down squared off right hand there left hander excuse me for the rider nearly there then she's gonna smash that time off Bailey Goldstone here she comes it's gonna go fastest then it's a massive run 444 8.6 into the green Oh, Spain on top now here in Whistler. What a run. Just look at the smile on her face. That is really... She could be happy with that. A big smile on her face. I should think so, Trace, eh? I should definitely think so. She'll be very happy with that run. And bringing the times closer, the top ten girls were pretty close in times besides Valley, so huge off that drop. I mean, that makes you up so much time just in that. I was super interested because we were talking about riders left, but she went all the way riders right, held her line, committed to it, and it was quite fast. So I think commitment and breaking points are really key on this track. I totally agree with you, yep. And arm strength. <laughs> and physicality, yeah. But there is, you know, because of the steepness of it. There is Hello to all our friends in the crowd. Yeah. Well, on our way to the fastest time, a big thumbs up. Okay, let's go down to Elia. I know uh, that was an incredible run. Tell me, tell me about that thumbs up that you did on the pedaling section. You know what? I was just very happy to be so far down the track, made it down in one piece. I just, I just thought I would do it. And what does it feel like to ride this type of track, the 1199 track? How was your run? It's crazy. I'm so happy that we have a track like this at home. Um, it's been unreal, like training on it and especially racing on it. Uh, yeah, it's just unbelievable. It's definitely like nothing ever before. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Jackson.
Well, absolutely. I think that's right, Ed. Don't you trace like nothing ever before? Rachel Pazu now next. And another Canadian rider on track. On a downhill southeast race series in America. Fifth at the Canadian Nationals last week. Between lines there a little bit over that big rock drop. Rachel, someone who will be used to Valdesol as she was there the other week. So either excited or not to be back in Valdesol style, not sure. But looks like she's handling it quite well so far. Valdesol, can give you PTSD. It's, it's it, pretty. It, I still have PTSD yeah. from racing in Valdesol. Right there. <laughs> Only five riders left then. After Rachel gets to the bottom, that 4.46 in qualifying, remember? Valentina Hull, fastest time of the weekend, that 4.14. Gosh, you just Go. see some of, oh, huge off the step down there. Good to see these women sending it though. Oh, cased into that third step of the step up there. And she's up by nearly half a second at split number one. It's not much with a lot of track to go, but you can see that she does let the bike go. This is an, a key section. We'll see what line she chooses for in here. I know I was very fast in here. Really let the bike go. So. Straight on that low line could be the right thing to do. It is good to yes. be able to commit straight to it and let the bike go. And she's even got a little pedal out of there as well. Set herself up, comes up wide to give her a good line in this next section. Yeah, good line choice, I would say there. By Peugeot, takes two seconds, over two seconds in that second sector to find herself two and a half seconds up in sector, split number two there. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and look, good speed around that right hander. It's so, so steep. <laughs> you can just see that they hang off the back of the bike trying to slow the bike down, but it is not slowing down. It is so steep in some of these sections. It just really is, yeah. This is difficult here, Tracy, as well. Awkward across that rock there. Carries good speed, goes for the Red Bull drop. It goes down! Oh my goodness me! Oh! Well. Well, we've got the best medical teams, of course, here at Crankworks. Yeah, absolutely. And coming out of that technical section, it is really hard because you've you come out said. of that steep sketchy, loamy section and then just trying to hold speed over that drop. And you said, you know, right two ago, you just said how hard it is to get the speed yeah. for that drop. I spoke about the other girls going around it because yeah. if you don't have the speed, you know, the commitment, but very impressive that she went for it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll update you as soon as we know anything, but uh, yeah. Good to see the crowds. I mean, it is, it's on the same, on Whistler Mountain, but it is kind of around the village. So a little more awkward to get to, but you can just see the crowds have really made their way over. Keen to see the first race on 11.99, which is so nice to see. Isn't it, it is, yeah, that's right. And the first event really of the week long festival, Crankworks Whistler really gets going. Yeah, I was just talking to Ali earlier about how it probably was a good thing it was the first event because I don't know how they would have held on if it was the last. <laughs> That's a good With point, the holes Tracy, like yeah. that after racing all week. So Rachel Bajou taking a nasty looking slam. Medical teams are with her. We'll keep you updated on her condition as soon as we can on a course hold, obviously, at the moment. So while we wait for the course to uh, wait for any, any news on Rachel, there is a lot to look forward to coming up over the next week. The battle is on for the king and queen of Crankworks as well. Start, yes. Starts right here today. Yeah, being the last, the last stop on the calendar, it will be a big race for all races competing, especially right, for that overall. Right, yeah. Did you manage to take the overall? You did, didn't you, Trace? Downhill overall, see, I was a one one discipline focus a one right trick, a one trick pony <laughs> maybe you're quite good i never at it, really though. went for slope style but you won you won the canadian open what the last i don't i don't know if i can talk about this now because it's going to give you fomo but the last five times this event's run <laughs> you've won it Trey. it's been a bit of an australian double act with you and troy hasn't it yeah maybe i just got motivated troy's won at six so when i seen ah. yeah, you know my fellow countrymen i was like you know what let's do it together troy and uh 
we kind of made a pact. No. <laughs> no, you know what it is? It was on the other side of the mountain. It was a shorter track and so fast and was gnarly. It? Was it? Yeah. Was and it? I just... It was one of Oh, my... well, there's some great news. Sorry to cut you off, Tracy, but I no. think you all agree. Very well worth it. Oh, thank goodness for that. Rachel Bajou then walking off the track after, well, let's be honest, a horrific rookie slam. So thank goodness for that. It, awesome. I mean, all wow. credit to her because she oh. she has crashed hard. And she... Let's have a look, Trace. I mean, as we say, almost... It's coming out of that technical section before, straight onto the pedals, but if you just don't have the speed and oh. then just... The speed just wasn't... Oh. And she had to be so nose-heavy, just... Trying to pull, but almost dropped like straight down. Missed time the pop as well. Off the top. Not getting that almost like it dropped when we off the end. Yeah, when we saw the live into it coming out of the technical, she was a bit like a little bit off, and just get, bit, yeah. you need to get the pedals down as soon as possible so that when you get to that boardwalk, you're really not pedaling anymore. But if you're pulling down on the pedal, and then your your nose is kind of diving with it, it's terrible. So, but here's Ainoa. Yeah. On her winning, oh, excuse me, leading run. She had leading a great run at the moment and a great she? time it was. A 4.44.3 then. A woman from Spain who is a resident here, sending that massive Stevie Smith booter up the top, making light work of this rock section. I mean, it was a brilliant run. Well, in her interview, she said she loves to have a track like this, and you can see that she really loves riding it. Then being able to test on a track like this and just have, you know, something so close to home, as she does live here in Canada, to be able to train on, it's perfect going into the next World Cup. Yeah, that's right. And this course, actually, 11.99, as far as I know, never will it be open to the... Well, you can't open it to the public, that would be madness. But it's going to be used for nations to come and train, team camps, that sort of thing, isn't it? It's yeah, a high I believe end training the facility. Canadians will be coming for test testing camps, suspension testing camps, bike testing, and then the training camps timing. And they've already had a few training camps on it. But I mean, it is the perfect track to prepare you to go into the World Cup yeah, series. Yeah, absolutely. And if and you want to test suspension as well, there's some pretty good holes up there for that. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the road to Royal, of course, as we just said, the battle to be the king and queen of Crankworks is hot enough. It's going to be a real battle all week long here. Taking in all the different events to find the best overall riders. In all these amazing Crankworks events we've got coming up next week. Jewel Slalom, Speed and Style, Pub Track, and of course, Joy, uh, excuse me, Slope Style at the end of the week. Joyride, it is Joyride, yeah. And Air DH. Air DH2, yeah, yes, there's, there's another down in there. To us, so. Caroline Buchanan and 203 points up at the moment. Martha Gill, 600 points. British woman in second place. Jenna Hastings not far behind. Keep an eye out though on Louise Anna Ferguson, who is going in this downhill this afternoon. And, you know, capable of taking some massive points. The king, the defending king, Baz Van Steenbergen. And when we talk about this downhill being a point, a point important, it certainly will be, as Tahito Arika Pene, the New Zealander, is going to be trying to put as much pressure as he can on Baz this afternoon. OK, five riders to go then in this women's final. And it's going to be Ellie Smith that's going to be the next woman to drop in. No well, I'm just stranger to dry, dusty conditions, fellow Australian, Ellie Smith. A fifth at the Rotorua downhill. Third at the Crankworks in Cairns, actually, this year as well. What can she do here? As you say, Trace should be used to these dry conditions. Woo! I don't know many places you can ride, though, and dust this thick, right? It almost needs to be like a current kind of racetrack. Yeah, and we don't have mountains as big at home either, so no. there's that. Yeah, <laughs> or as steep for as long. It was a real shock to me, actually, to ride down. I couldn't believe how long. I was pointing nearly vertically down a mountain for. Although but the speed I was going was definitely a factor in that. Ali ha is making a, yeah. a season out of it this year, racing all of the Crankworks rounds. A fully qualified engineer, which was very surprising when I learned that. Yeah. And going for the Stevie Smith drop. She's nearly half a second up at split one. Squashes the big roller. Sends the triple. It gets up in cleanly. The first woman to 
do that. And that will give her seconds of split number two if she can keep it going. So much speed across keep, that flat yeah, there. Yeah, keeping it low and pedaling. She didn't conserve any edge energy no. across that flat. And coming into this is where the riders say it gets really narrow and really dark. And you've come from pedaling into that Stevie Smith drop to have to slow right down and really take your time on the lines. But Oh, different line gets to the... Uh, Riders left of that tree in the midpoint of that section, it, carrying it good fast. speed out as well. Yeah, it was a fast line. She rode that well. Another rider riding without gloves. It must be hard on the arms here. And now 1.7 up then at split number two. So a massive advantage, nearly two seconds into the green. Oh. Coming into this steep section. Good speed through that right-hander as well. Really good. Trying to let it go, but it's just that cloud of dust at the bottom that you've got to yeah. commit to, isn't it? Oh, gets head front heavy. Hold heavy on, on it. the bars. Heavy on the Whoa. bike. That bike is chopping around here. She's let it go. She's Let's... carrying speed since the Red Bull drop. No problem then for Ali Smith. Yeah, well, she had the speed because she was riding down there like a terror, wasn't she? Racing some of the EWS series as well. I mean, when you get a track like like this, it does look loose, but loose is fast. You know, letting the bike go through those holes, it's what gets you the speed at the end of the track. Clean the over that table, gonna give us some good drive down on this straight three and a half up then and split number three, it gets steep again now. Will she take the line up on the rock there, closes it down on the inside. She did cut it a little fine, but it looks like she still took the fast line into that steep section, coming around into this huge, huge holes in this right hand. Arm. Yeah, difficult as well. It's a late apex on that one. The rider's cutting back across. Keeping the last. feet on the pedals. And it's difficult. There's so much going on on the entrance to this forest. This last forest, difficult left. Now she takes that inside line. How can and that, that not is be popular. quicker? That is popular. We will see that more and more today, but it is hard. Like, you need to be strong and still feel completely in control at the bottom of the track to commit to lines like that. So Ellie Smith comes down and go fastest by 4.1 seconds. 5.40 now the time to be. Here at Crabworks Whistler, the 11.99 is going off. Ellie Smith now leading. Four women left at the top only. I mean, wow. that was an amazing run. She hit all the jumps. She got a bit loose in there, but like we said, you do, you are going to get loose on this track if you're going fast. Yeah. And but don't forget the fatigue as well in the arms at the well, bottom. That's why I was so impressed because where she did lose it was a section where you would have been fatigued and maybe that didn't help and she did lose it a bit. But to bring it back, to con like to, to re set herself on the bike and be able to smash that bottom technical section. Yeah, she's riding strong. We might be able to see it right Whoa. here. It's <laughs> just that massive right hand of that hole. She got that really bunched up on the front and of that then, bike. Uh. And let it, let it go here again. Oh yeah, she would have felt that one, but strong off this drop. Yeah, she'll be, she'll be. New Zealand, Louisa Ferguson on track then. One of the women at Red Bull Hardline last week who actually made sense of some of the biggest features on that course and she won't mind these here today. No, absolutely not. And I did speak to her yesterday because I wondered if something had happened in her seating or not. She didn't get, she only got one practice run because she had a mechanical in practice during the morning. So her seating was still another practice run. I think we'll see a lot out of Louise today on this track. We know how good she's in the wet. We saw a win at Rotorua Skyline, the course there by 20 seconds in, 20, in 2022. 2.2 up and split one, sends that gap down there as well. First girl to jump that gap, and that will save a lot of time because you don't have to. Oh, she didn't need a pedal stroke into the Stevie Smith drop because she sent that gap up on the triple as well. I'm not really surprised seems that she was training at Hardline last week. Yeah, so you're going to see a lot more of I don't of know if these jumps are going to mean too much to Louise, but she looks like she's getting over them very easily. Last week she did the step on, step off, and she's very nearly hit the first 90 footer. So she's not scared. Good through here. We know how technically she is. Good technically she is as well. Yeah, oh, she's smooth. looking comfortable. She's looking really comfortable on the track. Smooth. She's Second. really picking her line. Can she win? Her second crank works. 
Second in Cairns this year, just point three off, took a six at the Innsbruck stop. Eight and a half seconds up there at split number two. It's a ph phenomenal run. You can see she's really checking the track before she's committing. Like, it looks like she knows where she wants to be. She knows where she wants to put the bike. And once she gets there, she's just letting it go. And it looks so comfortable and so easy for her. The complete rider can do the technical, can do the big gaps, the big jumps. Here she comes off the Red Bull boot and no problem. A four-point lead at the moment. She's going to be need to be a lot faster than that, though. If you look at Valentina Hull's qualifier, that 4.14 yesterday, Expect to see the times come down to something like that. Good pace around that left. And now pedaling down towards this little straight. I mean, it does, after battling through a track like that, you do need a little rest here, but you don't want to waste too much time when you know that Valley has set a pretty fast time in seeding. Losing a bit between splits two and three, seven and a half up though, but it's still massive. How difficult, Tracy, is it to ride this dust? You can see the bike just kind of getting deflected left and right. Well, it's kind of like you have to think of it as it's like the track is wet because the roots are dusty with fine talcum dust. Yep. And it makes them just as slippery as when they're wet. It's just a complete different mindset because it feels dry. It looks dry, but once you hit those roots, you're still sliding around like it's wet. And you can see their bikes are doing that. Yep. Didn't take that inside on that difficult left in there, but it's still going to be good to see Ferguson then take the lead in. What's he going to do? 432, 7.9 up. Lewis Ferguson takes the lead. The crowd works whistler. What a run that was. And now only three riders left to go. 432. <laughs> She only got out of control a couple of times, but it was a very smooth, controlled run, and she it's like she knew exactly where she wanted the bike to go, even though the track is catastrophic. And jumping off this is very cool. She was the first girl we saw yeah. to do that, and that would have saved a lot of speed. I mean, it's a harsh landing, but... And if you're not doing this step down as well, Trace, the pedal that you require to get up the triple and along that next straight, save yeah, some good energy as well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And she would have been able to... And that's that's why she also got across that double, the yeah. next double, which we've just missed. Line choice in this section seems so key. We've got some going riders left, some riders right. I mean, the line that you can commit to is the one that's going to be, excuse me, important to you. But yeah, no, that's all. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, getting a bit of a chop on there as well. But you know, you speak to any rider in the finish area, they're like, how is it? They're like, it's nasty. There's rocks, there's roots, you can't see them. Let's throw down to Elliot, who's going to ask Louise about her run. Lu Louise, you just said that run was wild. Talk me through it a bit. Man, the track is so physical. So by the time you're like halfway through, through I swear you're just hanging on and uh, trying to breathe and look up. And uh, yeah, sorry. No, congratulations. It looked like such a smooth run. Congratulations. I'll let you get in the hot seat. Enjoy your time. Thanks so much, Adelaide. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Just getting a clean one on through. So, yeah. Well done, Louise. Great to see. Three to go. Emmy Lamb then next in. Just 19 years old. The Canadian woman. Well, she just said just how physical this track is. And if oh. anyone's going to handle the physicality of it, it's an Enduro World Cup leader. Yep. Leading the under-21s this year, won four of the five stops in that series. And saying, actually, that she finds downhill scary. Wow, <laughs> you wouldn't know it after like a third-place qualifier. No, and I mean, we are lucky to see her on the live now to see just how she attacks. And I'm, it doesn't look like the downhill is bothering her so far. No, she's looking good so far. You're absolutely right there. Right in for the permitting team as well. A little bit back and split number one. Pedals hard into this big Steve Smith drop. No problem across there. Not tripling up, going for the double. But if there's one thing yep. she's going to be good at, it's being on those pedals. Yeah, I don't think she'll mind pedaling on the flat. I imagine this track seems a lot shorter than an enduro track, but it still is rough. And as Richie Rood said, it is hard and intense to race downhill. You think it's. You yes. think it's different, but it is still hard, and the intensity of a downhill race is up there. Yeah, of course it is. That's right. A few things 
More physical in my opinion. <laughs> Round the outside there. Makes her on a different exit, actually, this rock section. She Making pumped down happen, that though. rock. She pumped down that rock and was able to get over some of the holes in the bottom pretty fast. She was holding her speed out of there. But losing six and a half seconds in that second sector, nearly seven seconds into the red now, then. So Louise Ferguson really turning on in that midsection. Riders were saying that today the track was running slower yeah. and rougher. It's got to be, mean, right? If it's rougher, I think faster is better, but it's just so hard to hold on on a track like this the whole way. You're just aiming for your line, putting it in the holes that you, you trusted and you know are there for you, and then just letting it go the rest of the way. But Goes around that Red Bull boot at this time. Second to Bailey Goldstone at the Canadian Nationals last week. She's a won a Canadian a, Cup this year. Excuse me. Sorry, a no, bit go. Of, I was just going to say a little bit of an around the line, uh, around the tree line there, whereas we saw some of the other girls going more straight there. Eight and a half Strong back. on the pedals, though, isn't yeah, she? Phenomenal. Look at this. Carrying great peak speed into this left hander now. And absolutely carrying good pace down here as well, then. Yeah, she's flying down in this technical section. She won't be a stranger to those off camber turns, having raced the Enduro World Cup Series. All the way around the season. inside on that long right hander. Some riders will set up higher for that, try and hit that late apex, but it is a long way round, you have to say. Come on. Yeah, taking the wide line there as well, Trace. I'm surprised not more riders on that inside. It must be difficult yeah. to get onto or something. I think it's difficult, but you've got to think about the G out that yeah. you take the inside, you have to expect oh. the G out at the bottom as well. Emmy Lan across the line there, and it's good enough for third. 8.1 into the round, a 4.40. Great run. Vancouver Island made it. But let's be honest, the enduro specialist Absolutely. at the moment anyway. We're going to see her doing more down, and I just know it. I mean, when you've got a track like this in near your backyard, at least you've got something to train on. A very impressive run to back it up after her good quality yesterday. Yeah, and then absolutely. Backing it up today. Yeah, she'd have to be happy with that. Absolutely, Derek. OK, well, next in the gate, then, it's Miranda Miller. Let's hear a bit more from Elliot. You know, I was talking to Miranda at the beginning, and she said she never expected to take that much time off of downhill. It's been almost three, four years since her last downhill race. And she said the biggest change is just how much support these young riders have. So she's used to competing with these world champions, but now there's a bunch of 15, 16, 17-year-olds that she's like, where did, these, where did these girls come from? So I'm excited to see her ride again. She's one of my favorite riders. Let's see what she can do. 2017 world champion then Miranda Miller, 33 years old now. Took that in Cairns, Australia. The woman next to me, Tracy, you got you had yeah, it was a funny day, wasn't it, Tracy? You got you actually got knocked out in your race run and still managed to take the bronze medal. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that was some tight racing there in Cairns. And I mean, you know what? The week before I seen her training up the mountain doing intervals, so she deserved that win. She certainly did, yep. Yeah. A third in a World Cup in Lear Gang. The year before, actually, plenty of World Cups. Podiums along the way. Stormish, Miranda Miller then. On track, second in that qualifier, that 4.36. She was at the peak of her racing career, racing while Stevie was racing. So this track is going to mean, you know, probably a lot more to her than some of the younger riders that she is saying that yeah. she's competing against because she was very close to Stevie Smith. Yeah, she was. Until she was world champion, she was working in a bike shop down in Squamish. Oh, letting it go yep. loose in there. Letting that bike go. And fastest in the top sector then. By nearly a second over Louise Ferguson. So this is good. Huge, huge off that drop. Only the second person we've seen to go off that drop. Smashes those two berms before the Stevie Smith drop. Doubles up. She's looking very comfortable on this track here today. Few good pedal strokes in there as well. Didn't bury herself, saving something for further down. She is one of the fittest riders I know. She trains, I mean, she trains alongside 
the men. She trains yeah. super hard. Like I said in Ken, she was doing intervals up the road <laughs> that we shuttle up. So and great to see her come back from so many injuries. I remember she had three broken wrists or something in one year. Do you yeah, remember? Horrible, horrible. Yeah. I mean, her resilience on and off the track is just. It, it shows oh, in her she's up. Sorry, Tracy, but it's two seconds then for the Canadian. Wow, look at this. Not surprising. She is, like, looking really good and letting it go in that section. And I mean, you, the more momentum you can gain, the more you can let that bike go, the more speed you do end up having. And great to see her, you know, talking about the younger riders. Well, Louise Ferguson's one of them, taking some serious time out of it down here. Impressive this is. We haven't seen her near a World Cup for a long time. No, I know, and as soon as we get to a World Cup track, she makes an appearance, and it's like, where have you been? Yeah, <laughs> You're back right. on the World Cups. But as you say, Chase, must be riding an awful lot, training hard, just to be able to deal with this track. You normally need race fitness to come into something like this and be competitive, loses a bit now, over half a second into the red then. Well, she is race fit. She still races in the enduros okay. and local enduros, and she does mammoth rides as well, where you camp out and everything. So, you know, she's not lacking any fitness in that no, regard. That's true enough. <laughs> oh, almost lost it a little bit on the front wheel and managed to save it, so she's got to be strong in that upper body. Can she find half a second then in these last few turns now? Still steep here in Whistler gonna matter a lot what she does in this that last right hander in this next technical section. Look at the, the crowd getting behind so her. She comes close. into this last word. Yeah, cheering for their local Canadian. Oh, outside, yeah. outside of there, as we said, you can go inside or outside. For 32 to be though, I think. You're looking at me. Oh, Louis Bergson, time's gonna be safe. Here comes Miranda Miller. She goes in a second, just over two seconds back. Well, she could be happy with that, Tracy. Yeah, right, absolutely. Right. Amazing to see her back. She is racing against all the youngins after all. Yeah. No, she'll be stoked with that effort. That's a podium for her, and yeah. she hasn't raced downhill in how many years she answered to Elliot. I think she said four years. Exactly, exactly. Amazing. What a run. What a rider, though, to come back after all this time, to come on what what they're saying is World Cup level even harder than some World Cup tracks, and to just blow the field away like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Super impressive. It jo just really shows composed, she's still got she? because Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of the sections didn't even look as gnarly as they as you made them look anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, no one's gonna make it look, there. No one's gonna make it look more difficult than I did, that's for sure. Yeah, she came up a little bit short on there. I think it is one that you do you know, you really have to send it if you don't want to have that back wheel tag a little bit. The boys were saying that during the week that yeah. it was easy to case and even if you don't case it, it's a bit of a flat landing. Yeah, yeah. And then you gotta break into the next run. Break hard, so. I heard, yeah. Okay, so it's the world champion in the start hut, the fastest qualifier. Just 21 years old. Valentina Hull, all her wins at the Crankworks World Series have come in Innsbruck. Can she take her first Crankworks win outside of Austria? And she's on a tear, winning the last two World Cup races. Winning Crankworks Innsbruck. Yeah, I'm really excited to see her riding this track. I feel like this is a track made for a look at the pace of her on this top section. Yeah. Carrying it's... great speed through these flat parts, through these holes. You can just see the speed yeah. that she's holding compared to the other oh. riders. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, it is. We've never seen Valentina hold so much pressure on her in the young year, in the early years. 2.4 up at split number one. And she said her racecraft is there, and you can see it all of a sudden. Everything has come where it wants to be for Valentino, and she's showing us exactly the rider that she can be. Yeah, and how oh. nice it is to see a rider really knowing how they can ride and finally being able to put it on track to show us all just how good they can Not ride. Not a pedal stroke along that straight. She doesn't need to. She carried so much pace into it. Yeah, Able we to know save that some she's energy unbelievable now. at jumping. Jumping, pumping. And she will be 
I imagine a little relaxed. She did have time up her sleeve after seeding. So she knows that she can really focus on riding the track to the best of her ability today because she has, she doesn't have that much pressure. Yes, pressure to win, but... Are you for real? 15 seconds up. Oh my goodness me, the world champion. Showing us why she's wearing those rainbow stripes. That's insane. And that's what we saw in qualifying yesterday. And it's so composed from Valentina. She doesn't look stressed. She doesn't look like she's pushing hard at all. But she is. Oh, my she God. She sure Just is. Just as I say that. And she is a cut above, but I mean, oh, Yeah, my she's goodness. a cut above. That's right. So composed. So dynamic. Putting the bike exactly where she wants it. Oh, Hull oh, delivering one here. Been here a couple of weeks, actually. It's the World Championships next. So nearly 20 seconds into the green. It's a massive run from Valentina. Annoyed not to be leading the World Cup, actually. Cami Balanche still up front with those three second places in those three rounds. You do get the feeling that Valentina Hull is coming. Oh. Well, she's not far behind if she's not there already. And I mean, I would not want this girl chasing me down that hill. Tiger on my back. Sharply turns into this right hand. You can see how steep it is, how tensive the riders are. She said yesterday, you know, into, uh, she oh, she's said, low on that oh. camber. I thought she'd drop low she on was. that camber, yeah. She went over that slippery road. Small mistake. She, she has got 20 seconds. Hard. She said it is hard, it is physical. I mean, she's making it look easy, but she still said it is a hard track to ride. Oh, oh turns it down off the last sharp, and then here comes Valentina Hull. She wins in Whistler, nearly 20 seconds into the green. Valentina Hull wins. The Canadian Open on the 11.99, the first run in this race, destroys the opposition. Insane. What a run from her. A full 12.9, despite the track running slower, she went faster than she did in qualifying. Is she even breathing? <laughs> she doesn't even look like she's puffed out, does she? No, she, she looked comfortable to me in that run. No, she looked absolutely comfortable, and that's what she said. As soon as she got her confidence, all yeah. she had to do was ride in her comfort zone. That's and exactly her comfort zone it. is fast enough, she's a racer. So just look at the way she rides, I mean... You could mistake her for Finn, almost. Yep, two In times junior section. world champion. A little bit longer. Perhaps she expected to really bubble in the elites, but she is there and cooking right now. Look at this, just slamming the berms. On yeah. the low line through the trees there, Trace. She's just, I mean, her riding is just getting, her, she's honing her skills finer and finer. And you're just really, really seeing the best of her riding at the moment. Agreed, yeah. And the only, like, she did make a little mistake at the bottom, but this track is so hard and so physical to look that smooth the whole way down. I yeah, mean, that's right. It just shows how good of a rider she really is. Yeah, amazing. The Austrian, next stop. Defending those rainbow stripes in Fort William, Scotland in just a couple. Look at the style of her, Trace. I mean, she's strong enough to go to Scotland, so... OK, Elliot Swither, down to you. Bowie, that was an insane run. Like, you looked so good, so composed the entire way down. Huge scrub coming into the finish. How did it feel on your end? I definitely didn't feel composed at all. <laughs> Such a hard track. Like, it's honestly the... Hardest thing I ever had to ride. What makes it so difficult? Well, I guess just like the Canadian trail style is like super steep and loamy. And right now, they are just like riding on sand and it's just steep and you break and nothing is happening and you just hope the berm catches you. And so now you've, this is the fourth win in a row. You were talking about how your race crash has improved. Does it feel like that coming to this race? You feel like you're just in your stride? Well, the last four races has been amazing for me. Next up is World Champs. So I really don't want to give them away, so fingers crossed. Well, good luck. Thank you. And there it is, a 20-second <laughs> advantage over Louisiana Ferguson. I mean, that's massive. That is a huge run. Miranda Miller, brilliant. The top Canadian there in third place, just ahead of Ellie Smith, but the course we knew it was going to be gnarly, and it has yeah. delivered a race with massive time gaps, it, really. 
I mean, we saw Valley looking smooth and composed, and she said it didn't feel anything like what we saw. No, so that's right. What the riders are feeling out there is those holes, that steepness. The, I mean, it's not even loam anymore. It's just powder. And she said it's like riding in sand. The bike just going out from under you everywhere. Yeah, it, I walked yesterday. It was like it's like the Southwick <laughs> of mountain bike tracks. This one, it is almost deep sand in a few places. Valentina Hull takes her first Crankworks win outside of outside of Innsbruck. Okay, we'll stay with us. We'll be back in a few moments. See you after this. King of a legend, Stevie Smith, a.k.a. The Chainsaw. He was a bit unpredictable, he was creative, he was wild. He did have a great life, full of giggles and laughs and adrenaline. The untold story of a true champion. Long live Chainsaw. Now available on Red Bull TV. Really awesomely fun. No grip. No visibility. No fear. Just pure rally action. Driving excellence beyond imagination. On all surfaces. In all seasons. Heart stopping. Breathtaking. World Rally Championship 2023. On Red Bull TV. Now, what did I do, boy? I rode like a man. In the 1990s, Jimmy Levan. Pioneer, Daredevil, and BMX Rockstar bridge the gap between rebellion and progression. A reckless innovator who made BMX history. Jimmy's life would have killed anyone else that wasn't a BMXer like a thousand times over. Yep. Go Fast Pull Up, the Jimmy LeVan story. Now available on Red Bull TV. Have you ever stared at a picture and it came alive? They say every rider has a calling. 15 athletes on their mind trip through Europe. A fantastic ride into the wildest dreams of biking. The Old World, now available on Red Bull TV. I'm Rob Warner, this is a bottle of maple syrup and we're about to head up and give you some insights on the 1199 track whilst dropping some serious Canadian knowledge on the athletes. This is Track Walk Trivia. Well, we're here with our first victim, Valentina Hull. First things first, quick trivia question for you. If you had to live here for the rest of your life and could only eat one thing, would it be poutine or would it be maple syrup? Mm, probably maple syrup. Well, it is my favourite tipple. So, joking aside, Valley, we're here at the Stevie Smith, the 11.99 drop. You've seen the course leading up to it. You can see this section here. What's your thoughts on it so far? Oh, the track so far it looks really, really good. It's the first man-built section here, so we have a massive like step down into a triple step up. And this track here in Whistler, the 1199, right? I mean, we've walked down this far. Yeah, it's got it all. I think like there's a lot of natural surface still left. Hang on, wait. I'm out. Enough about the track. You're Canadian. You can answer this for me, and it's important to me. Oh, yeah. What, in a dance-off, what would come out on top? A beaver or a moose? Uh... I'm going to stop you there first. <laughs> a word from our sponsors. Hey there. This is the new Rock Trucks Boxer. Don't let rough terrain ruin your ride. Let Rock Shock suspension take the bumps so you don't have to. It's cool. So, you, Mark, you're a Canadian. 
part. Would you rather communicate in moose calls or would you rather wear a beaver tail hat for the rest of your days? I don't really know what a moose sounds like. It's like I'm letting the program down not knowing this. Well, you are Canadian. Yeah. I'm a bit disappointed. I think we've got it. Ready? I think it's the moose you yeah, put in your hair. hair yeah. what, moose. What have you Googled here? Moose. It's all the wrong spelling. Moose hair. Okay, we had the wrong moose. Starting again. Of course, sounds to me like the morning after a big night. All right, no more moosing about because this track is a serious proposition. Like you said, the track's got great variety and especially this bottom bit, you know, there's that nice off camber slippery draster in here. It really has got a bit of everything. It's, it's worthy of the legacy of Stevie, isn't it? Absolutely. It's Great a hell of a track. Mate, thanks for your insight. Thank you. Stay off the maple syrup. Don't forget your hockey stick. Oh yeah, cheers. I'm more Canadian than you need. Well, there you have it. That was Track Walk Trivia. Thanks for joining me. And that only leaves me to puck off. Oh, I got it. See that? Sorry. Excuse me. I'll pay for that. All right, Dalsons. so Elliot Jackson's here. Elliot, what do you think of that women's race? Huh? Oh my goodness, this this track can't be boring. There's no bad racing on this track. It's so exciting that, you know, all of the women just nailing it. It's so cool to see. Absolutely, yeah, the course is delivering. It's a worthy tribute to Stevie Smith. Well, let's have a look at a Max's tire check now with Sam Blenkinsop. Hi, it's uh, Sam Blinkensop here, and we're here at Whistler for the Canadian Open. And this is my Maxxis tyre check. So my tyre of choice every time pretty much is the Asakai DH Compound front and rear max grip. And basically it's the tyre I run throughout the season for all the World Cups. And I'm also running uh, 29 and my tyre pressures, so I'm running 23 in the front and 26 in the rear. It basically stays the same throughout the whole season. I might go up for my race runs here because it's getting more rocky and more blown out, so I might go up a PSI, but that's about it. The tyres are bulletproof. I've had no troubles all day, and I've just been having fun on the course. OK, well, thank you very much. And of course, the 11.99 today, this racetrack created in the memory of Stevie Smith. We race it after this. Pump up your tires for the bike content on Red Bull TV. And check out the best live events, feature films, and shows. Download the Red Bull TV app for free. And sign in to watch all of our content offline. Download the app now if you want to get to the top. You have to dig deep. Pull the dirt down, shovel the dirt over, pull some more dirt down. Bingo, bango, bongo. A story of dedication, teamwork, and friendship. Steps to the top. Now available on Red Bull TV. No grip, no visibility, no fear. Just pure rally action, driving excellence beyond imagination on all surfaces, in all seasons. Heart stopping, breathtaking. World Rally Championship 2023 on Red Bull TV. Okay, so we're down in Creekside, just on the edge of Whistler Village here. Amazing part of the world. British Columbia delivering everything we expected this afternoon. The 1199 track, this new track, absolutely in, insane, I'm going to say. The oh, action's yeah. been bonkers. And of course, you can look at it on Trail Forks. Get it up on there, find out all the stats, see what you want to do. 
There it is. But it's pretty steep, if I do say so myself. It feels a lot steeper <laughs> than that, right? You rode it too. Oh my. I heard you did five, ten runs before we got you on camera. Yeah, oh, yeah that's, right. That's no, what they no, said, no. Yeah. You had a trap walk before, and you still didn't even do the first feature on the. Oh! Yeah. I was on an enduro oh, bike. Yeah. A yeah. single Corellia. I was saw, underbiked here. No, no, no. We saw Julia Long on, a, on an enduro bike too. She did fine. And uh, let's get down to the serious business then. Baz van Steger, Steenbergen for Socrates. Zotos comes in. I don't know if he'll be philosophizing about this track this afternoon. Eddie Masters, his first race this year. Tahuto Arika Pena, the New Zealand are going to be the, trying to be the king of Crantworks. Dante Silva, Mick Hanna, Jackson Frew, Mark Wallace, Jacob Dewitt, Finn Owls, three Canadians to finish the job off. Will it be a Canadian winner? Oh, well, man, they, it's going to be hard to beat the Canadians. It is, I agree. Yep. Lining up perfectly this afternoon, then. The last six to drop there. And we have Matt Walker, actually, in the hot seat. Just came off of that EWR win. Yeah, that's right. Looking very relaxed and happy. A 3, a 33 from a good run as well. A 3.27, the fastest time of the weekend. That was Finn Isles' his qualifier yesterday. Six seconds outside, and we saw Valentina beat that time. The course probably is quick enough. And these are the king of the crankworks over the years. Our favorite there, BK, 2015. <laughs> Slavic, LeRon. Every year has been so, like, drama filled and we got we got business bass in 21 and then we got uh yeah. what a bit of a mullet there he's like a mullet he's like yeah. a mullet and here he is <laughs> from vernon in the usa then 29 years old and really looking for some points for that king of crown works to defend that title here this afternoon yeah so between bass and tohoto it's only 39 points and Bass is really going to have pressure on him. I think that Tohoto probably has even more pressure on him because this is not Bass's main event. Not He's, his forte. Yeah. Well, I, I always say, like, we forget that Bass was a, uh, a regular on the World Cup circuit, and he said that he didn't have that great of a run. But I think, here. yeah, right? To be 18th in seeding <laughs> on, this, five off only, right? yeah. on this type of track, yeah. Bass is on Bass the machine. He is. I agree with you. Like a ninth. A crack works cans. Yeah, he's a machine. Oh. Up over that triple, beautiful style over there as well. And I think he does well at these tracks where you can really get in a rhythm, lots of big jumps, berms, and stuff like that. And now further down then in this lower steep section, holds that high line. Whoa, drops then into the inside on the way out. We're going to see so many different lines there. It's yeah. really, really like anything that you're bike can do anything your personality can do losing a little bit more time 5.9 yep. back yep losing some serious time then in that second sector on time nearly six seconds into the red now i know this is where he wanted to clean up his seating run everywhere after that stevie smith drop and it gets so so steep in these lower sectors good speed across there no problem off the red bull booter for him hard on the brakes into this right the road road this part this this gap into this berm right there we're gonna see people jump all the way to where that tree is wow. and it makes a huge difference because that's your speed all the way down this next pedaling yeah section. it's worth sending them <laughs> you have to send it. yeah you've got to send it if you can exactly at it to carry all that pace along there sat down there resting the legs a little bit yeah that is a thing right a bit, a bit strategic he doesn't want to blow himself out make any kind of stupid decisions that would take him out for the running the rest of the week. Well, it's probably hard for him to know how to push as well. He wants to salvage as many points as he can. Eight back now at the last split on track. For sure. I mean... Oh, it's, it's a good eye line now, isn't it there? Perfect from him. And getting to the left of yeah. that yellow pad. We haven't seen that much. No, creative right in there. Good line choice by Van Steenbergen. And of course... He's got a whole week, a whole week of events coming up now as we move up to Whistler Village. Goes across the line in a third place. 12.3 back. Whoa. A great effort. The hands are hanging. <laughs> right, I'm saying this is so physical. I yeah, know. yeah, oh my goodness. You, like, I haven't heard so many people be like, I couldn't hold on. I had to, I was talking to Miranda and she was just like. Okay, let's go down to Trace, who's with Baz? We're going to be sending it over to Tracy with a quick interview of Bass. Bass, that was one of the hardest downhill tracks of the season. And you're not a common downhill rider. How was it for you? Oh, it's so gnarly. Like, 
I was trying to just breathe and be smooth, but that is a gnarly track. <laughs> and going into this week, um, what was your strategy racing today and what's your strategy for the rest of the week? I'm just trying to not overcomplicate it and just do as well as I can at every event. and That should be good. All right, it was great to see you out on this gnarly course. Good luck this week. Thank you. All right, thanks, Tracy. Okay, oh, back to the top then. For Socrates, Zotos. Been wavered off that rock at the top. And he's on that, he's on that propane positive team. A grease rider. Teammates with Philip Atwill. Yeah, who, well, that's who, right. I was going to say Atwill, the other big downhiller coming from Greece. Yeah, moved over there. He, uh, oh. I, I love seeing his Instagram because he just has so much fun. He's like a kid that knows how to live. <laughs> <laughs> I just Good love lad. it. Living like a Greek god. Yes, yes, totally. Cuts these turns there. Oh. No way. Wow, that frightened me there. I thought he was going to be off the edge of the... Uh, the end of the takeoff there. Almost into our camera guy. He was pretty close, I would say. Mick Hanna said that. He's like, if you take that inside, then you feel like you're about to go off the, uh, off the boardwalk. That was very there. nearly more than a feeling for Socrates. <laughs> huh? Look at that. Right off the inside there, Elliot. I haven't seen that line. It sets up wide on the way out. Yeah, that outside is much, much smoother. It allows you to carry some speed. You do have to get on the brakes right afterward. It a little bit of time. Six back then, nearly. <laughs> Third and the final split. And now it gets steep, steep, steep. Piles of dust everywhere trying to grab you. And this is where we see the riders who are comfortable getting off the brakes in these steep sections. You can't slow down even if you want to. Gnarly across that rock in the middle of there as well. It's great to see just so many features on this course. There's that gap. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see him able to make it over this tabletop much easier. He cleared it with massive ease, actually, yeah. And doesn't need to pedal until now. Yeah. You can really get that tuck in, save a little bit of time, but that's what we talk about. There's, this track is really strategic and where you let off the brakes, what lines you do, you might give up a little bit of time on an inside so that you can carry more speed in that next section. He carried good speed over that rock into this sector, too. Wide, wide, wide. Going to try and cut back for the apex late. And he's a rider that he does everything, races a four across world tour. Whoa. Tons of bike skill. Takes that inside on that really difficult left there. The outside line really squared off now, big hole in it. It's a good run from him. Looks like he might move into the top three. Third place, 10 back. Turn off Matt Walker, the leader at the moment. Third place for him. Yep. Good run then for Socrates. Let's see what he did in this rock section. So there's a couple of different lines. You can go inside here, kind of wall riding that. Kirk was saying that he was trying to kind of use it as a wall ride. Gets into some dirt so he could turn up pops off and then lands on this outside. And you can see right here, that spot right there, I said it's smooth, it's it's rough, but it's the smoothest yeah. line you're gonna find on a track <laughs> yeah. like this. It's all relative, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, let's go back to the top then. For a man who can, Marcus Kant. Up to the pro class for 2023. Races a lot here, actually, in Western Canada in the, in the BC Cup. Yeah, he's a uh, local Kamloops rider riding for that district bicycle Kamloops, Starco clothing. Oh! You want to get up high there. It's so off camera, you can't really see it because it's the, uh, the shadows there, but all of the dirt has gotten pushed down throughout the week, so the yeah. riders are trying to adjust up, but you have no traction. And if you get into that dust, you're in trouble. Yeah, totally. This is next. Uh, this is difficult down yeah, here. When you look it? at this, it's horrible. Those roots are way gnarlier than they look there. Well, for sure. And, yeah. you, and you really have to turn back to get into that berm early because, like I said, that speed that you carry out of that right-hander is all the way down through here, trying to take this inside. Mark is really hitting that rut. It's about a two-inch rut that you have to be into right before that drop. Oh. Definitely up. That's a, he had a triple. lot of speed there, yeah, good. No problem, 2.4 back at split number one. And he's going way up high. He went high and then low. So you can see he carries a little bit of, he cuts off a little bit of distance, but as we'll see later on, there's some riders that are going all the way high and he makes 
doesn't lose too much, only loses half a second. So, oh! oh loses the front, down he goes. Yeah, pile of dust now. And that, this track, it takes so much strength. And so he was the fastest in the speed trap so far. I mean, it makes sense. Kamloops is super dusty, blown out. So I know he's definitely comfortable on this type of riding, but we're kind of seeing him get over the front a little bit. That's where the gym comes in. Like, yep. as soon as you land on all of those steep, uh, steep shoots, it's like doing a push-up with like 150 pounds on your back. Different line, they didn't go around that tree. Carry an awesome speed down there, though, I'm going to say. To no avail now, nearly 12 seconds back for him then. And this track, I mean, it's one of those tracks where if you crash, there's still time to be made up. And so you can see he's still 11 back. So if he um, if he can kind of stay where he was time-wise, he'll still maybe even be able to get into that top three. Foot Taking out. a foot yeah, off. Maybe not a <laughs> bad thing either to be doing that. I feel like back in the day, back, back in your day, there was a lot of those grass turns. I, yeah, there was a lot of them. I'm yeah. not down. I'm Entire not down tracks them. of them. <laughs> I really, I'm glad I wasn't there. It was all there. the bikes could handle. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the better, believe oh me, God. with no suspension and I'm tires totally that would deflate. <laughs> Even sight of a rock. <laughs> a chain that would drop at the slightest bump. <laughs> Fifth place then for Marcus Carr. Matt Walker for Marcus Kent. So, Canadian rider looking good yeah, there. Be. A solid, solid time considering he was Billy bummed with the crash, but it's a good run. This is that, so he, he was really trying to push in these steep sections oh. and you saw that and he did exactly what you're supposed to do. Let the bike go out. I don't know if he actually wanted to go inside there. Got a big kick on that back wheel, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, for sure. Look at him, almost. But he's, wow. He's super good, so watch him here. He gets a little bit over the front. Front tire slides just a tiny oh. bit. It wasn't Tries a massive mistake. No, no, and it and it's funny because there was a there's a rock, a flat rock, right in the middle of that steep part, and okay. it's so easy to push a front end. One of New Zealand's fast, finest, and fastest, Eddie Masters. Then crashed actually at the first DWA race, the WS race this year, and uh, this is actually going to be his first competitive run of 2023. Yeah. The big rig. What can he do? For sure. I mean, you see him there. He, Eddie was good friends with Stevie. He said if, if he was here, he'd be all about it. This is this is truly a world-class track. Oh. oh! Oh, and he gets wide there, coming out of that. That's a big, steep shoe, actually, onto that road. That's going to cost him some time. And he said, you know, I'm not, oh. I'm not 100%, and so he's really just trying to get in as many race runs as he can before yeah. World Championships. That's what he said to me, chilling back in the race. And this doesn't I look don't that know, chill today. Right. I don't think Eddie knows how to chill, to be honest. <laughs> oh. 2.1 back at split number one then. Whoa, wind blowing on the triple. One of those riders that can do everything. Top 10 in downhill, top 10 in EW podiums in EWS. Back that's in 2019. Right. Here's Look that high line. Here's that high high line right around the outside. Look that's at the how line fast you're gonna see Phil Isles on, the number yeah. one qualifier. And you can see how much pace you can carry across that camera. Now that was visibly quicker to me. Totally, and it's but it's so difficult because that camber is it's, you can't walk on it. That's how That's much right. off camber and it is. You're trying to drag a brake across yeah, it. And yeah, it, everything's right. telling you to go to make it fall down the mountain. Right. Four point nine back then at split number two for Eddie Masters. Riding, come in. Good yeah, to see. he is. And you can see him like. If Eddie was fully on form, there's a couple of spots where he's not pushing, not kind of hitting stuff as fast, maybe hopping over a couple of things that he would normally just let off the brakes on. Gets but that gap into there, drops another. He's a, a bit further back now, six in. He's definitely a, an experienced rider. It's funny to think about Eddie being a, a veteran at this point, but that's the difference between you know Eddie at this point being able to say, yeah, I know what it means to get back up to speed. I've been injured. I really want to have a finish off the season strong. So I am going to quote unquote chill into the last couple of races. Last camber across there then. Still riding with some intensity here. Takes the wide line there. Good speed through there actually. Big mistake then for Eddie Masters further up. The rest of it has looked good. Yeah, you'll, you'll see him riding slalom, riding A-line. 
8.2 back, goes into third place then. Look at that. NZ in the top three places. I wonder how long that'll last. We've got three Canadians as the fastest qualifiers. We got a uh, couple of pivots on the podium, Crestline on the podium with Sam Blinkensop. <laughs> throws the goggles. He's happy to be down. These, I mean, these guys have grown up racing together. All these guys, you know, been traveling around in vans. I remember when Matt Walker actually slept in the parking lot at Mount St. Anne and went out. I think it was Wyndham, went yep. out and then got a top 10. <laughs> yeah. I just love that they, they can wild. do that. And I mean, now look at him, right? Like. It's just so cool to see Eddie. that. Eddie's feeling it. <laughs> Eddie's feeling it. <laughs> Rest up, Eddie. Rest up. Well, 14 riders left to go then in this final. If you just joined us, it's Crankworks Whistler. It's the Canadian Open on this brand new 11 and 99 track. Long live Chainsaw indeed. As we go to the top for Marcus Goju. Another Canadian, privateer Canadian, actually first year elite, and he um, he won the ARDH last year and got a podium in the Canadian Open downhill. So, oh, no. oh. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this is uh, you can tell how intense it is, right? Yeah, he's yeah, he's pushing on air as well. <laughs> Look at this, then for oh. Marcus Gogun. Look at him, fourteenth in qualifying, but carrying good pace. I'm I'm pretty sure that him riding in a t-shirt might be adding to the trepidation here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I always feel naked if I'm riding yeah. in a t-shirt. Yeah. Well, point five back and split number one. And, it, you know, he has that Canadian style. You can see the knees kind of coming out. It reminds me of, you know, we talk about C.B. Smith. It reminds me of old C.B. Smith style when he had those knees super far out. You can tell this, this kid kind of grew up in Canada. Oh, he's wide as well. Holds there it, it really high there. An amazing pace through there. That is high risk, that line. Yeah, yeah. It and you really can tell is. how rough it is. There's three big steps. 3.1 back now, then. Loses 1.5 in that sector two. Very good speed down through here yeah. on the steep. Oh, yeah, look at that. Fast and whistles into that left as well. Just aggressive the entire way yeah. down. Keeping the intensity up. Oh, you hear the fight just hit some big holes here and there. And you want to run that really low tire pressure here. You can tell he's running pretty soft suspension. And it's nice because you have all of these seconds where you really need the traction. And it's doing well for him, only losing half a second. Maybe slowed it down a little bit in that burn, could take the tabletop. Yeah, he didn't jump there at all. You're right, 3.6 back now. Hard on those pedals. But no lap in intensity here no. at all. Whoa. Oh. Look at the rocks rolling out behind him. The rider's saying, you know, in this dusty dirt, you just can't see these loose rocks, no. these tree roots. Taking it's that full wide line. It's full Stevie Smith in this afternoon. And you can tell how committed Marcus is. Oh. Oh. What the oh. heck is he doing? He jumped into there, didn't he? Wild. He's going crazy. Get this man across the finish no. line. Get him across the finish line now. <laughs> not even, he doesn't care. He's not taking a foot off. He's just going for it. Sprints to the line. Comes across the line second. That is one, Marcus. That's a run. That was a run. That's what we're talking about in Canada. That's what we're talking about in the 11.99. Riding with some spirit. That's Great to see. And him splitting up those New Zealanders, those naughty New Zealanders on the podium. <laughs> Here's that high line, so you can watch, watch the suspension compress, is super hard, and then kind of throws him up, but he's all good. Compared to the rest of his run, that was chill. <laughs> it was perfect, he didn't He, he hasn't didn't even got going anything. at this point. No, no, not at all. It's the last wood he saved it all for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see his tires, this is where we, we heard that. You can see. Hole there, look at that right. hole, man. And you can't do anything about it, you can't avoid it. Watch the front tire, hits that rock, I mean, as soon as you feel that, right? It's a boulder. He he drug a boulder out of the ground. Oh my goodness. Okay, well things hotting up here this afternoon. Patrick Laffey now. Another fast Canadian. A good few World Cup seasons under his belt. Top ten as a junior actually yeah. in a world championship. Yeah, got that 43rd in Fort William a couple of years ago. Yeah. They actually did some hard enduro on the motocross bike, Is Rob. that right? Yeah, for sure. Got to respect that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Top on three that. in the Canada Cups. Da Vinci, Fox suspension. And down into this left. Not many riders gapping over those tree roots there, actually. They're really 
really nasty when you walk them. It is, and, it, and you really want to get the bike back on the ground so you can get braking, but yeah. at the same time, if you're on the ground, then you're probably going a little too slow. Yeah, it's just the fact you're almost turning a little bit right. on it. Yep. Yeah, you do have to turn all the way down that second That's to get right. back to the right-hand berm. Less than half a second off at split one, then. So Laffy on a good <laughs> run here. Where, what, the, what line will he take here? He's gone the lower line. Oh, Jumps I mean, that off is of commitment it. Good. There. That's, that's right. That was that line that Kirk was talking he about. He pedal strokes in on the way out. <laughs> huh? And it's, it's actually terrifying. Let's see what he does on the split. 3.1 back then. At this point, 33K through that speed trap. It's terrifying to pedal because at any point you could catch a pedal in one of these routes or, as Mark Wallace put it, a potato. Yeah, there's Sniper, everything under the dirt here. I think one of those riders that has a style where you can tell it, it can take a lot of speed. Rides kind of with that upright, kind of knees in, stairs with his hips a lot, yeah. able to pump really, really nice. Oh, oh my God! Holds on to it! The Woo! back end, well, the uh, tail wagging the dog down there. <laughs> and you can't, it doesn't look that gnarly from where we're looking up. I thought, I thought he was just like shaking his head like I'm glad I'm alive, but... I think he's probably looking to see if he's got a flat. It might have felt like that, the way the back end was uh, kicking around there. I don't know. Looking at that section, there. coming into it, it looks like you shouldn't be able to jump into it. And if, if your chain guide catches it, chain ring catches it, that's yeah. what happens. Oh. But you have to jump into it, so... Good pace across this camera. Jumps across the, that stump there. I mean, even that is gnarly. Yeah. Make no mistake, I couldn't believe it when I walked it, actually. Yeah. Because there's nowhere nice to land no. anywhere. It, there's, it, when we say they're doing gaps, they're doing gaps into these tree roots that are just horrendous. Laffy goes across the line. Third place for him there with that 5.5 five into the red. The captain is going to be happy. The leaderboard looking a lot better now after these last two riders coming down. The Canadians are, uh, they mean business. Matt Walker leads. Marcus Gojuan in second place. Patrick Laffey, the man there, just coming across the line to take third. Blenke over to congratulate him. And look Let's at see what this. Happened to this mistake. So Oh, he, he gets a little bit wild right before the drop. Back in, he got a kick he, off the yeah, top, back maybe? in kicks oh, out. Oh, foot clips out. That's man. an amazing save. Shows how much skill he has because his back end didn't even touch the lip. So he wanted the back end to be about two feet further right because there is a little kick that you can get some height on. But yeah, able to hold that. It shows the strength and the training that he's been putting in. Wow! 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 Just a quick. Uh, Signing sesh, no worries. Well, the action unfolding thick and fast here at the Canadian Open at Crankworks Whistler, the 1199 track. Yeah. I think Stevie Smith will be smiling if he's watching this this afternoon, <laughs> yeah. don't you? For sure. He's like, this is exactly what I want to happen. <laughs> well, almost. I'd like a shower now. Yeah, right, just right. to really turn it up to 11. That's all we need, a little bit of rain and we're there. No, 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 no. This track, I, I don't... I, don't, I think Steve would probably be the only person that would want to ride this track <laughs> in the rain. You might be right, mate, yeah. You might well be right there. Matt Walker leading at 3.33, just six seconds outside the fastest qualifier of Finn Isles. Gabriel Neron next, a man who's had a busy week. Last weekend, sixth at the Canadian Nationals, won a Canada Cup midweek this week. <laughs> and he must have come straight into practice here at Cranworth. Yeah, it was only a couple of days ago. Wow. And he was... Uh, as you can see, he's Canadian national champ, won that national championship last year, riding for uh, Dunbar Cycle. So he's really going to want to show people what he can do here. He is oh, deep off that bridge. Let's go! He's going to get... Oh, and he gets a little yeah, wide there. that's nice. Him. There is a double-double that you can do, but you really have to commit because you can't really get much breaking in there. Only 0.01 back on wow. that top sector. So very, very much in touch then. Goes deep on that step down, showing he's carrying good speed. Let him! Oh, oh no! no! You hear him say it. And he was right there, Elliot, like you said. 16 thousandths off only. Uh, ah. That's a bummer. He's, st he's still going, but... Uh, been amazed actually at the lack of flat yeah. tires we've seen here. Well, there's a one of the things that this track has is a lot of on those fast sections right after that you have a lot of parts where you have to let off the brakes and it's really rough and kind of flat. So you can't really do anything but just kind of pound it out. Um, 
and the tires and stuff like that have gotten so good that you don't really worry about it as a rider, and you can't because you can't be thinking about a flat. No rider is thinking about getting a flat. No, all no, the way no. Down. No, absolutely not. He's going way too fast with the flat. I know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, good skills, though. Oh, man. It's so cool to see so many people up here watching this track. This is one of those tracks that is incredibly exciting to watch from the side because you just see people getting wild, you see all the different lines. We need a new, well, we, it's only missing one thing, huh. a heckler's rock. <laughs> I wonder, maybe, I think that that's... <laughs> There's plenty of rocks up there that could become oh heckler's rock, right? Everyone should go and check out a couple of riders' Instagram. I think Jake Jewett had it on his Instagram. There is this rock slab that they're jumping into Which that is... is Terrifying. Yeah. It's, it's maybe what 30, 40 feet tall. And the, but now it was bad enough when, at the start of the week, but now the bottom is just like a big hole. Yeah. And it's like free falling into I don't know oh, what. Totally. Like, it's horrendous. Yeah. Man. Connor Fearon said, you know, you have to jump it because it's so much faster. But he said that he did. A, he had a couple of uh, helmet to stem moments. Mark Wallace said that he had a yeah, he yeah, did his yeah, stem yeah. on it. And so you can tell how gnarly it is, all these riders so strong and still getting a big headbang on it. Definitely above the game. The Canadian Open dominated really in recent times. As near on comes a, oh well, just across the line. Trying to make a push. Right on it with that flat tire, but yeah, it's uh, the last six times we've run this Canadian Open on a different course. It's been Troy Brosnan, it's won Tracy Hanna. Winning five, the last five editions for the women. And, it, and it's actually nice that we have this timing. Oh, and this guy. Yeah, Zahoto. let's watch out for this then. So I think pressure-wise, this is probably the most pressure-filled run of the entire week because if he can make up points on Bass, yep. if he could come out of this event in the lead for King of Cranks. Wow. And we know how good he is at pump track. He's not going to be far away in a lot of other events as well. So the New Zealander making his bid to be King of Cranworks for the first time. It starts here this week for him. You can see him on that MS Mondraker team, a prototype bike. He, You can see how much well, he's pushing as well. Oh, and he goes down there. Listen to the noises these bikes yeah. are making. It's brutal out he there. He looks super good. A third. Point the, uh, 07 up. Fastest top sector so far. Squashes off there. Oh, this is good from Tejo then. Let's see what he can do. This is where the track gets fast. Come up here. You got to let off the brakes. Go into that Stevie Smith drop. And the World Cup racer. Well, tries to hold that high. I don't know if that was a mistake, but he does carry good speed out of it. It's short. That is a lot short. That's that right. Way. But you don't carry as much speed as you do on that outside line, which might add up all the way down here. But he's two seconds up there to the split. Number two. And it worked out for him. It takes over two seconds oh, in yeah. sector two. That's insane. Long sector two. And this, I think, is where he's going to try to make up most of the time. Oh, it's so steep being that World Cup rider. Focusing on downhill all year, riding the entire World Cup season, riding the entire Crankworks World Tour. Taking the win at Pump Track, Rua, third in the D out downhill in Cairns. Oh, just getting such good pumps 2. in. 2.6 now up. Oh. Going low in that room. Terry trying to shave off as much distance as he can, and now he just needs to sprint. This is a great run then from Tehuto, Arika Pene. Couple of breaths. Hop out of this. Goes fast, carries great speed off that rock. That's so wild to do that. Oh, he gets the inside. He's got to let the bike go. Reminds me of, you know, a Lori Greenland run yep. back when he was on Mondraker. Oh, he finds that rock, pushes hard, fires himself up across this camber. It's perfect. Gets way up high, like you were saying. Skips that stuff. Yeah, to the left of that tree as well. So Tahuto really on one. One turn to go, pedaling everywhere. Phenomenal strength for him on these lower sections then. Tahuto Rika Pene goes fastest, takes the lead at 3.30.8. 2.2 up. Well, he's taken into Basman Steenberg in there. Okay. In the bow for the King of Cranworks. It's on. It is on. He did what he needed to do. Good run for the New Zealander. The man from Rotorua delivers one when he needs it. You can see Bass, big Bass back there. Not a smile on his face. And that is only three, <laughs> less than three seconds actually off Finn Isles' qualifier. Yeah, you can see. And the course should be slower, Elliot. Yeah, definitely. Getting really good pumps.
That's really what we're looking for on this track. If you can get a rhythm going, and so you could look at his eyes. So his eyes are going down. So this was exactly where he wanted to go. Like you were saying, Rob, shaves off so much, so much distance. Yeah. If you're gonna take that outside, you have to go super, super fast because you saw how much speed Toto carried on that inside. Carrying good speed in this last steep section. Come out of there, you're like, couple more pedal strokes. I'm to the finish line. Don't let up now. Nice feeling. Yeah. We've had a good one, good. just pointing it towards the it line. Feels good. Done. Okay, well, let's go down to Trace. To Hodo, Matt was getting pretty comfortable, but that run was amazing. How was it? Uh, it was pretty mean. It was tiring, but it was fun. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> I mean, when you ride a bike, you don't make it look tiring. You made that track look smooth. How did it feel riding? Uh, yeah, you just got to try like find the flow of it. Um, and yeah, at the same time, you've got to hit some shit like hard, but yeah, it's pretty good. Thanks a lot, Toto. Good luck for the rest of the week. Thank you. <laughs> so these are the standings. We go into the top 10 qualifiers. Tahutari Kapene leading them with that 330. We just saw him come down. New Zealand back in the top two spots. Canada third and fourth again. That's it's right. A it's of a, the nations here yeah, this it's afternoon. A, it's a Canadian or a New Zealand sandwich right there. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go down to Trace. He's got some news for us. Trace? Yeah, so we've heard that Finn has had a bit of a mishap in practice. Um, that was Finn has had a bit of a mishap in practice, so we won't be seeing him start today. So that winning run is really up to anyone up on the hill now and even in the hot seat. So let's see what happens. Well, that is some very breaking news indeed. We saw Finn practicing not so long ago, so yeah. interesting. Okay, thank you very much, Tracy. So nine riders left to go, not 10 out. And Tahuta Arika Pene might have a bigger smile on his face yep, now. Yep. Well, you well, know what's, you know what's amazing is um, Dane Jewett in the juniors, Jacob's brother, has the fastest time of the day so far. I think he's, he's under 30. Okay, well, let's have a look then where we are in Creekside. There's plenty going on in this part of the world. Oh, interesting. Uh. Hey, Finn! Finn! All right, mate, the local, local. Finn, this is Creekside, right? This is pretty, this is pretty flash. Yeah, you don't spend much time down here because the village is right there. Now that they have opened up bike trails here, I feel like it's sort of opened up the village a little bit more. Yeah, it's cool. And beautiful here. And Lots it's also stuff. where the 1199 ends, right? This Absolutely. Is, this is it, the new track for Stevie Smith for the Canadian Open on Sunday. I do feel that I probably need to point a bike down here. I think you have to. It's different from anything you would have ever seen. Come on then, let's do it. Let's get it. Here we go. Yeah! Woo! Look at it, it's absolutely lomelicious. Yeah, yeah Finn! Well, I'm gonna let you go now, thanks very much. I'm Thank you. for a date with a king. See Have you in a bit, bro. Well, 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 if it isn't the king himself, all right, Baz? How's it going? How are you, mate? All right? Very good, good to see you. Baz, your paddle? Could do. Quite relaxing. It would be relaxing, yeah. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. It It's hard work. It's quite tough. <laughs> <laughs> it got busted. <laughs> I'm absolutely Hank Marvin. You want, you want to get some food? Hank Marvin, yeah. Starving. <laughs> Starving. This right. guy. Yeah, let's do it. Guess the charcuterie. <laughs> A bit of cheese. Cheers, Baz. Oh. Woo. You know what, Baz? It's been an incredible day, and there's only one thing that could make it even better. I was right. 
good things do happen to people that hang out with you. Yeah, sometimes it pays off to be the king, I guess. I'm more relaxed than I've ever been in my entire life. I'm away with the camera. This is definitely the perfect end to the perfect day, right? Some riding, we've had a massage, we've chilled at the Nita Lake Lodge, we've had mint food. I think Creekside might be Whistler's best kept secret. Loving my life in <laughs> Creekside. OK, we go back to the top for Dante Silva from Chala Vista in the USA. And he was third, actually, at the USA Nationals just last week. Yeah, that's right. His teammate, Lucas Shaw, in that Canyon Collective Team 1. He's been doing super good in the World Cup season overall. A bunch of top 30s, riding really well. One of those riders that has been kind of holding up, holding uh, US downhill, putting US downhill on the map. Yep. One of the new wave really coming sure. through inside the top 15 in Monsanto, the World Cup there last year. Got the fitness then for these long rough tracks. Definitely was on pace and about a soul oh, Uses the berms. Uh, only 0.2 back there earlier. Interesting to see him go wide there on those two berms before the Stevie Smith drop. For sure, you have a you have a choice between going inside and catching a rut that's super small, or you can kind of turn back out. I kind of saw I saw Finn taking that outside throughout practice, but as the rut develops on the inside, you yeah. start to go in. Wide. Holds it high. He's right where he wants to be there. Beautiful riding oh, around the outside. So and it's the pace they exit yeah, with here, which sure. he'll carry all down this neck straight now. Oh, but losing massive time then. He must have had a big mistake, Elliot, in that midsection. Yeah, let's see. Nearly I mean, five seconds back now. And you can tell how aggressive Tohoto was. Really, you know, like Tracy talked about, riding the track, hopping stuff, putting the bike where he wants it. So I think it's going to be a hard time to beat. Yeah, Dante, it might well be. Dante definitely doing his best. Still some big names to come, though. Jacob Jewett, Mark Wallace, Kaya Hearn, Jackson Ooh. Frew. Mick Hanna as well, nearly eight seconds back now, then. So maybe just losing speed, losing uh, losing time down here, not on the pace. Yeah, for sure. And I think one of the things I'm noticing is a lot of people have been adjusting lines. Dante's on some of the lines that were really popular early in practice, and they've gotten so rough. Yeah. So we saw Tohoto kind of using, making S turns, riding, trying to find some smooth stuff, trying to hop those holes, Dante finding some of the bigger holes here. It was interesting to me to hear Tohoto say, find the flow, which almost sounds insane when you yeah. talk about a track like this, but it's not. It's actually exactly what you've got to do, right? right, right. It's true. You it's, can somehow link this track up. That's, it's so true, and it, but it's terrifying. It's one of those tracks where you have to ride it fast for it to work. Yeah, that's right. Exactly that. Silver then in the sixth place. Yeah, the faster you go, dare I say it, in some respects. It's true. It's, <laughs> it's terrifying, but there's a certain <laughs> speed that works, whether it's, you know, little hops that you have to do, your bike working, you get your bike set up for a certain speed, and you have to kind of ride it at that speed. Take a look at this high line. You can see how off camber it is, how precise you have to be where his tires are hitting. And then once you get to about here, he's going to let off the brakes, pop over that stump, oh. point down. That was textbook outside right there. Yeah, it was. To no avail, unfortunately, really for him. Incredible bike skill to be able to hold it on that inside, uphill, off camber line, pump into Dante the back of the stump. Dante heading off to world champs next week in Scotland. It won't be long now, no, before we head north to Glasgow, where the weather probably won't be good like this. Right, from Port Moody then. Kurt McDowell now on track. Sixth at last year's Canadian Open, third at the Canadian Nationals last week. Can he go better here today? He's one of those Canadian riders that just rises to the occasion anytime there's a Canadian race. Won national championships a bunch of times. Yeah. Riding for Da Vinci, helped develop this bike. Da Vinci based, I believe, on the other side of Canada, on the other coast, East Coast more. You can see the Forbidden Bike Company right here. On and Vancouver Island. Anytime that the uh, the track gets rough like this, Kurt is super good at finding that speed. And less than half a second off then of that first split, so very much in touch with what's to come, that's for sure. 
Deciding to tuck there a little bit, wants to get a couple of pedals in. For sure, and you can see the wind, so the riders are actually looking at the tape to see how much wind they have, if they should tuck, if they should pedal. Oh, inside there. Inside line, the shortest way through this section, really. Yeah, that was super nice. He was taking that line from the very first run in practice and stayed on it. I'll tell you what's interesting, Elliot, is that really at World Cup races, and he's four back now. You rarely see such diversity right. in line choice, right? That's so true. I think. Um, oh, oh, oh. Down there. <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of times we say a track kind of gets solved. So yes. you have um, yeah. one of the things that happens at, at these higher level races. You have so many people on the side of a track. And here, I think it's really interesting because it's really about the rider. So at Crankworks, you don't have this big team, a bunch of line spotters on the track to say, ah, oh, I saw Finn doing this. I saw, you know, Jackson Crew doing that. The riders, it's about the riders picking the lines that they want. So you do see such diversity of, uh, of line choice and riding style. Yeah, interesting. Pedaling hard along there again. Last few turns now, then coming up for Kirk Winkdale. Lost some serious time in those middle two sectors, really. Yeah, and that's the, there's a bunch of sections where you have to carry speed over these kind of flat stuff, really let off the brakes on some of the steeper, steeper sections. So I'm not surprised the people that want to take the risk are making up time there. After that, didn't lose too much time. 0.9 on that second split. Let's see where he finishes up. McDowell goes in a third place. 5.6 back. Massive time gaps, but that, of course, is down to zero. Honestly, just to the nose. It's <laughs> yeah, totally. tearing them apart here this afternoon. Yeah, on a track like this, you know, a five five seconds on a track like Innsbruck is a lot more than on a track like this. Exactly, that's right. There's yeah. So there's a thousand. And then if you go somewhere like Lee again, it's like five tenths is yeah. a long way. You can have you know 10, 15 people on the same second. I hope he knows there. that's a permanent marker. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm never washing it again. Ever. And then <laughs> it's gonna grow my fringe. <laughs> Here's that wall ride going way by the tape. Oh, look what he landed! And look at the explosions of yeah. dirt and rock behind him. Hops out of there. You can see him six inches away from that mossy rock. Picking a point to turn off of. And it is a little bit rougher out of there, but like you said, saving off some distance. Here's Connor Fearon. Seven to go. First time we've seen this man in action. A man with some real World Cup speed, World Cup heritage, a broken collarbone at the start of the year. Means that this is actually his first race run of 2023. Yeah, which Whoa. is amazing. On that forbidden bike, as I said, from Vancouver Island, actually from the forbidden plateau where they get their name. Wow. And he loves this, you know, loose stuff. He's used to riding in Australia, rides those flat pedals. And he doubles in there a little bit. Just comes over the top, misses those roots on the inside. And we're going to say, a man with one of the best corner speed oh games in Not the business. Even close. Anytime in the corner, Connor wow. will just blow it out of the water. And what's it up? He's up by nearly a second. Oh my goodness me. First race back, and he's on fire. He has come out fighting. He has come out sharp then. We can get up at the top there a little bit now. Let's see what he does in this steep section. I know he's not scared of it. And on that proper downhill bike, riding a lot last season, actually on enduro bike, and then on a downhill bike that didn't fit him. This one does, I've been told. And, th and he was saying that he oh. just loves this bike. Lost half a second. Still, in the, still ahead, though, and this is where he's going to want to make up a, a lot of time yeah. using those flat pedals. You can see how low his heels are. Stuff is so rough. A few hundreds off a World Cup win in Leah Gang a few years ago. Letting it eat down this steep stuff. He is letting it go fast across there as well. Going to land on the brakes here. Good to see oh. Connor. Like you said, the corner speed, Connor really pushing, feeling good on this track. Yeah, he is. He's showing us exactly why he is capable right of what here. he is at World Cup Racing. Goes back there into the red now, nearly two seconds back. So it's looking better and better for Tahuto. I don't think Pepe in the hot seat at the moment. Fit guy, race, race some Enduros, like you said. Really just loves being on the bike. Hasn't had a whole lot of time, like you said. I saw him pushing up to try to get as much practice as he could. Yeah. When he said to me, I said, what a shame I get injured just before the first race of the season. He said, there's still five downhill World Cups left. There's still right. plenty of racing left right. for him. Fast through these trees. Look at him picking his way. It takes the outside into that left. Oh, looking good here then. 1.8 back at that last.
split. Can he touch that time at 3.30? It's gone by already for Penne. Fear it across the line. 3.5 back, losing more time in that last sector. Still good enough to go to third place. Yeah, he'll be he'll be stoked with that. Like we were saying with Eddie, kind of have to race yourself back into shape. There's yeah. nothing quite like doing a, uh, a finals run, especially on a track like this. So he'll take away that he was had the speed at the top of the track. Maybe uh, maybe he was a little bit tired, but that's something you can fix super easy. Okay, well, let's go down to Trace. Who's with him? Connor, that was an amazing top, and you lost a little bit of a time at the bottom. How was your run? Yeah, I've been off the bike for about two months with a broken collarbone, so this was a hard, uh, really hard course to come back to. Like, just don't feel I had much like riding strength, but still good on the bike. Just feel like if I went any faster at the bottom, I would have died. So, oh, happy with the run. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, very impressive run for Andre. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, that, fe that feeling would probably make me back off a little bit oh, in the yeah. bottom as well. Okay, sure. then, strap in Richie Rude from the USA, a former downhill world champion, before going off and smashing Enduro World Series. Back on the downhill bike now and going fast. Fourth at the US Nationals last week. I believe only a second or so off Lucas Shaw, the man who won. I know, and I, I you know, oh. like we were saying, Richie is uh, he's a downhiller at heart. Yeah. And uh, for Yeti to have this downhill bike for, for him and Nick to come back to, it's I know new, he's... a brand new prototype bike, right? I sure. mean, all the Yeti fans around the world are going to get pretty oh, excited about goodness. a new downhill bike yet he doesn't do anything halfway so 1.1 back though he is uh he's gonna be loving it you know he said the downhill is super intense we would think you talked we talked to emmy about that as well you would think that these enduro riders would be you know super super fit only 0. 0.5 0. Yeah. 0.4 back at yeah. that first one but they were talking about how much more intense downhill is than enduro yeah that's it You've got to bring the intensity for around three and a half minutes on this track here this afternoon. Good line through there, flying through there, actually, for Richie Rude. Oh, for sure. And you can just see how strong he is. Loses 0.3 in sector two, though, 0.7 back on the big clock. They're taking some lines that nobody else Whoa. is. Yeah, he picked up in there. And watch how, how, watch how much uh, his upper body, it stays upright because he's able to hold himself up in these really big compressions. Whoa. Fast, hard through there. Floats beautifully off the Red Bull drop. Yeah, this but is. He's linking his track up. Yeah, no he stalls. Is. He's carrying good speed really everywhere. Good. Look at how smooth yeah. it is. So, so nice from Richie. Two back though. Putting uh, Tohuto Arika's time somewhere in the perspective. Look at speed he has on is the that wheel spinning? Where is he pedaled a little bit? This roost coming oh, up. Oh my goodness me! One of the most powerful riders on the planet. Oh. That bike is working really good. Hey, look how straight I it went know, down yeah. there. So beautiful. Yeah, you're right. Oh, loses the front of that right there. Tried to, tried to go a little bit further inside coming into it. But still very much in control inside there as well. Let's see what he's going to do then. It's going to be hard to pull back. Anything like two seconds though. But look at the gap. It might be good enough to see him go second ahead of Matt Walker. Richie Rood crosses the line, does go second. 1.95 into the red. I wouldn't be surprised if he made a lot of that up on that pedal. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah, that was. Look at the size of the legs on him. And the arm, look at that. Can't even shirt can barely hold him, hold his arms in. <laughs> There's that bike looking good. Finally, yep. finally good to see a, a Yeti downhill bike. We're going to see a lot more of it very, very soon, actually. Mick Hanna, the next to drop in. Okay, Trace, down to you. Rich, Richie, that was an amazing run. How did it feel out there? Oh, it felt really good just to be able to focus on that one run, but man, my arms are dead at the bottom, so. Super fun out there, though. Oh, your arms are dead. Uh, you're like a pro enduro rider. What do you have to say about downhill? It's a bit harsh, or? Oh, just some big compressions over there. <laughs> How's the new bike running? Oh, it's running great. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Richie. <laughs> Well, that's what we were talking about, though. When we talk about that intensity, like every movement you make is deliberate on a downhill track. 
Yeah. Richie said that like on Enduro, a lot of time you'll have a, a section that's super intense, but then you have time to quote unquote rest, which I think he means pedal. <laughs> Five to go then, and we go back to the top for an absolute legend, a man who won Crankworks in Cairns this year. Mick Hanna turns 40 years old in a few months' time on another one of those, the only actually other Yeti prototype downhill bike in existence. And we know how committed he'll be and how fast he'll go here. Conditions perfect for yeah. Sick Mick. I mean, you, you see him say it, on a real bike, on a real track. That's Mick. Yeti just, <laughs> Yeti just found the most powerful guy <laughs> on <laughs> bicycle. <laughs> no, I agree with you. <laughs> Excited Absolutely to see what insane. he can do on this on this track. Three World Championships medals. Two, one bronze, two silver for Mick Hanna. Been within point three of being world champion. Taking this inside, said it was... Oh, he's right in the bushes ah, there. I was wondering, so he's actually going inside of the rut. And he's up by point zero three then. So three hundreds up for Mick Hanna. He was telling me about how terrifying it was to go inside. I was like, oh, Mick, there's a rut. If Mick's scared, it must be bad. It. High line here. Can he hold it across this camber? He does. It's oh, going to give him good so pace smooth. now as well. Whoa. Look at this from Mick Hanna. Rides everything. Enduro, E-Enduro. 1.2 into the red now. Great work, slalom. He is a man who can, and he's been at the top for so, so long. His work first World Cup, actually back in 2001, can you believe? I 22 mean, years ago. I will always remember him winning that World Cup with bars that were about a 720 wide. Vigo, 2006 <laughs> in Spain, that's right. His only World Cup win. Ticking a box massively by winning at home in Cairns. 2.3 back now for him. Again, in pedaling all the way down here and onto the far row, round the corner and up the hill. Look, Look at this. At that. No one else has pedaled that hard there. Getting a couple breaths in. Time to be made up here. Oh. Hopping out, hopping. We haven't seen anyone go that high. No. Nope. It's okay, a ton of speed into this open bit. He let it drift wide. And he's all feet up the entire time. Look at that. He's used to these open turns, loves them, loves the East Coast riding in the US. Lots of that open stuff. And he gets that inside there. Used to letting the bike drift around as well. Piles of deep dirt. Deep dust mean nothing bad to Mick Hanna. So what's it gonna be? 2.3 in the last bleed. Comes down to the line. Mick Hanna goes for 3.19 into the red. It's a good run. Fourth place. Mick Hanna losing another little piece of time on that last. Look at that then. Richie Rude, the only American, breaking up the Antipodeans in the top five. That's right. Tracy will be relieved to see brother Mick get down, I, I imagine. That's right. Well, judging by cans, I wouldn't be surprised if she was like, Mick, why didn't you win? She might, if we get an interview, she might, uh, she so might take, tell him off on a couple of take spots. Take a look at this second yeah. turn. Turns up early, goes Whoa. inside of the rut. He's turns, well inside it. He turns on nothing, on a slightly off camber onto, if you go off the left side of that, you're into no man's land. Yeah. Yeah, had to put the brake lever through a tree. Yeah. I'm not very comfortable doing that. No. Ever. And see the, you can just see the, the style that Mick has, the technique to be able to hold that high line, knees in, confident, and then the pedal roosting on a mountain bike, on a downhill bike. Okay, well this will be interesting. Tracy's with Big Brother. Uh, the boys are going crazy in the booth about your handlebar brush in that bush up just before the road gap. Can you tell us about your line there? Yeah, I had a look at it when I walked. Um, it's actually scarier on the left. There's a little stick that can take out your pedal, but uh, drifting onto that bridge is a little scary too. But you definitely carry a bit more speed. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. How was your run in general? A bit different to Cairns, but pretty gnarly. Yeah, it was pretty gnarly, but um, I'm stoked with how I'm riding. The, that cut style of track's not really my strength in the past, so to be kind of competitive is really good. Yeah, well, it was great. Good job. Have a good rest. Thanks. Well done, Mick. Always a pleasure to see you race. And this is the man leading at the moment then, Tahuto Arika Pene from Rotorua in New Zealand. Can he win his first Crankworx downhill here this afternoon? I mean, I, 
there is something about the King of Crankwork battle where we saw with Adrian Lerone years ago where these riders just rise to the occasion. Right out of the gate, Zahodo is hopping, super aggressive. It's the most aggressive run that we've seen all day, yep. emptying the tank on the pedal. That's world class. Exactly. You're dead right there. And so might this be. Jackson through the next man and drop then. Only four riders left to go in this Crankworx Whistler final. A 3.35 in qualifying for him. Saw him come fifth. Can hear, good speed up here. You can actually hear the uh, kind of the little break dragon. He's another one of those riders that is got to be really wanting to put in a good showing here. 96 points, I think, off of Brass. Uh -huh, OK. So, so still in touch as well. Definitely. Takes that tight line over the roots there. And don't forget, second in the downhill at Cairns Crankworx. Only 0.3 of a second off Nick Hanna. Sets up wide there, gonna use these berms. Really good pumping. And he's up by half a second to split one. Wow! You can see that, you know, Jack has been riding a ton of pump track, a ton of slalom, going for that King of Crankworx overall, and you can see it in his downhill riding. Really getting good pumps in that turn. Won the first oh. count of the cut this year. That was That's insanely nuts. quick into there on that line. And how can that not? I, I, that looks so. <laughs> that is. Why bother with the high line if when you can do the low line like at that, that speed? And he's still in the green there by nearly half a second Keeping now. All of these little holes and stuff like that. Oh. Jackson being super creative on this track. Yeah, letting it roll as well. Right is saying that you, if you're prepared to get off the brakes on these steep sections, you will make some serious time. Really nice. You can see him just maybe a couple inches left here, maybe half a little hole there. And I wouldn't be surprised if Jackson is expending actually less energy than somebody like Mick, able to just hop exactly where he needs to. Looks to be running a, a soft sap on that bike as well. That's Whatever right. it is, it's cleanly working for him, and he's red now. So nearly a second in the red then on that last split on track. You can see him adjust his hands, loosen it up. Got one more section to go. Can he find that red back? Can he get that three quarters of a second between here and the bottom? That was quick through there. Whoa. You've gone this far. Just, you're thinking, just let it loose. I've had a good run. Yeah. Don't tighten up. Let it go. Keep that intensity all the way to that Left finish line. The pad. Outside there. But with good pace. 324 now. Last looks, turn. Looks strong. Here we come then. Jackson Froome coming down the line. Ruto and Pennies goes. Time goes by. Second place. Point seven into the red. It's a big run. Jackson through. That's a really, really good <laughs> run. Wow. You see him a little and upset. Maybe made a little bit of a mistake. Only lost time goodbye. in that one Good section, but every single person just shaking their arms out shows you how difficult this track is. People ask, you know, downhill, you don't really pedal that much. How is it so physical? These are some world class athletes. Oh, yeah. Training every day. Still. When Mick Hanna's almost too yeah. out of it, too, out of puff to do an interview, you know it's hardcore <laughs> yeah, up there. This is that inside line, and he's just going straight. It was insanely quick. That was super, super nice. Okay, well let's go down to Trice. Jackson, how was your run? It was wow. That is a uh, full-on track. Uh, I'm still out of breath. My arms, I still can't close my hands, but. That was good. There was a bit of a mistake here and there, but I think it's impossible to do a perfect run on this track. That's sick. Yeah, good job. And going into the rest of the week, do you feel like you're going to have momentum or a bit tight? Uh, my aim here was top five. I really wanted to come in and maximise. Then I saw the track and I saw how high quality this field was and sort of hoped maybe a top 10 or a top 15. So to come down with that, I'm, I'm stoked. I mean, yeah, very impressive riding. Good job. Good luck for the rest of the week. Thank you. Of course, a big week coming up here at Crankworx Whistler. You can catch all the action. Kaya Hearn, then his first race of the year, actually. After a bust shoulder at the start of the season, had surgery. But a good qualifier telling us that he's already on the pace. Yeah. Yeah, just loving another Australian, loving these, uh, you know, rough, loose, dusty tracks. Even though the tracks might not be as, as steep as this back home. Or as long. <laughs> <laughs> you get the similar conditions. So yeah, like like we, we were talking about with Connor and Eddie, you gotta kinda ride yourself into shape. So for him, like you said, to have that qualifier, he's definitely gonna be stoked. Oh. 
And a little swap on there, gets him using the berms. And very much in touch at split number one then. Only 0.02 back. Nothing. Absolutely level pay pecking with Tahuta Rika Pene. Taking that loses, slow yeah, line. Loses the front there. No problem though, regains it. Man. Jackson was really fast through there. Yeah, you could always see the difference in speed, actually. But look at this, the clock telling a very different story. Now he turns it from red to green by half a second of the second split on track. So Kyle Hurd riding smooth, but it's working. That's right. This, this style of track, like we said, a lot of times smooth is fast. Yeah. Skipping some holes, really unweighting where he needs to. You don't hear the tires slapping rocks. You don't no. hear the rims. Beautiful stuff then. A little bit wide there. Australian delivering here to Ari Capelle looking on well. And a little raise of the eyebrows there as he sees his compatriot competitor. Nearly a second into the red now. It's going to be hard to bring that back. It is. Interesting stuff to Huo was consistently fast in every sector. That's what we can see here today. Yeah, and I mean, it's really that steep, it's that steep, steep stuff, yeah. and it's super deep there. I think if you can kind of adjust inside, maybe ride on those off cambers like Tahuto was doing, there's time to be made up, but Kai having a really good run here. First race back, like you said. Yeah, it's been a good run. That time to be. Not going to be far off it then. Here he comes to the line for Kyle Hearn. Good enough for third place. One and a half into the red. A good race run for the Australian. What? Especially when you consider that's his first race of the year. Yeah, yeah really. Coming back from surgery. Impressive. Emptying the tank. Yeah. That one hurt. Look at him. That's some heart. <laughs> Rolling the <Yeah>, dice. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he said his shoulder's all good. Impressive. Which is going to have a big... And just two riders left to drop here at Crankworks, Whistler. The Rock Shock's downhill on the 11.99, the Canadian Open. Coming to life, can anyone take down to Huto Arika Panay, who is staring his first Crankworks win right between the eyes. And actually, we saw, it looked like he got wide, but his front tire just hit a loose rock. Yeah, he just slipped it, didn't it? And there's nothing you can really do about that. You have to be ready, you know, maybe somebody like Richie or Mick kind of put some rocks in there. You never know, so you have to be ready for it. That's happening all the way down the track, so you can never go in the same place twice on a track like this. No, that's really almost... Yeah. It's not the easiest thing to deal with, is it? No. The fact that... You could be perfectly online and still it's something so hard that you just can't believe what just happened. 100%. Well, this might be a big threat then to Tahuto Arika Pen. Part of the Norco factory team had a podium sweep just a week ago at those Canadian Championships. It was Lucas Cruz that took the win ahead of this man, Mark Wallace. The Canadian from Vancouver Island. The gnarlier it gets, the better he gets. A protege brought up, brought to speed by Stevie Smith. They spend so much time on Man Prabhu on the island. What can Wallace do today? He can definitely push for the win. Yeah, you know, yeah, I talked to him. I was like, Mark, this seems like your track. He just shook his head and he's like, you know, after that second drop, it's on. That's that's where I start to shine. That's where we would think of Mark Wallace starting to shine on all these steep stuff. The harder it gets the better Mark Wallace is. That's right, and when you see what he rides on Mount Prevo, it That's will right. blow your mind. It's so committed. Mark, Uses go. the berms there. He's up by nearly half a second and split one then. This is great from Mark Wallace then, the Woo. Canadian. Man, it would mean a lot to him to win this inaugural race yeah, it would. on the 11.99 track. Yeah, it would. You can't pay bigger respect to Stevie than this. Oh, in the middle of that oh, rocket, that. different That's line. what we imagined that was Mark Wallace doing. The pace he came into there at. He had to scrub a bit of speed oh, off in that right hander. Goodness. That was bonkers, he's up by 0.63, now, 0.68 now. So Wallace extended through that difficult, long second sector. This is where he wants to make up his time. You can see how fast he's going. This is where he might. steep sections. This could be where he accelerates. Can he make it even more time up and split number three? Good pace across there. New team for him this year for Mark Wallace. Shifts down in the air so he can get some pedals. That's thinking on your feet. Oh, oh. doubles down in there. Oh. 0.54 now, half a second, the oh. gap comes down. Only rider to be ahead of the hard 
at this point in the run. Yes, that's exactly right, Elliot. And pedaling hard here as well. One of the hardest training riders on the World Cup circuit in downhill mountain biking. Jumps into there. Pops off there, beautiful. Oh, Mark Wallace riding brilliantly here then. Feet up. Delicate taps it around that turn. Gets a pedal stroke in. Gets it straight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Full He's pace over there. It. It's a little messy there. He's and only got 0.5 to play with. It's going to be close to Huto's 330 standing. Good though. Is this going to be it? Mark Wallace springs to the line. And it goes. Oh, oh, Awesome. What Phenomenal a run. Phenomenal run. What a run by wow. Mark Wallace. Oh, yeah. Mark Wallace bringing the heat here this afternoon. That was insane. This, this, this is a track when you see Mark ride this track, you've never seen anything like it. Okay, Trace is with him. Mark, I know this is particularly special for you. What does that track mean to you? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot of... Um, history and legacy to go with it, and man, it's a it's a proper track. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you ripped it up. It was pretty loose. How did you feel, especially coming into the last little wood section? It got very loose. How was your run? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, it was real smooth for most of it. Exactly what I was hoping for, and then uh, had two moments. That was one of them. But you know, I'll take it. Well, you knocked a New Zealander off the podium for Canada, and I mean, it couldn't be a better person to do it. Good job. Thank you. Dude, how was that? that how was, was that left? That right hand, excuse me. Run. What? Uh, Just letting it hang out, Mark Wallace. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. Gracie Hem Street there. She doesn't live far away either in Coast Gravity Park. Last man to drop then, Jacob Dewitt for the Pivot Factory team. 20 years old from just down the road there in Squamish. And a big moment for this man. He's been riding so good. I talked to his parents, he said he's just so happy on this, on this team. Really fits his personality, loving the bike, having the, having the time of his life, year of his life. And we saw what he was capable of at the last race in Innsbruck where he took that third place. Oh. Gets a kick on the back wheel there on one of those prototype pivot bikes. CNC machined lugs. Bronze medal, yep, that's absolutely right. What can he do then? Look, we're gonna see the split time come up now. Oh man, I'm holding my breath. I don't know what's gonna happen. Point oh. 1.5 back then, so a lot of work to do for Jacob Dewey here. Eighth in last year's Canadian Open, of course, on a very different track. And this is one of those tracks where he can make it up. Oh. Jumping Goodness all the way me. over that. That was incredible. One of the first riders to actually do the jump into the rock slab here. And he's pulled back point six. That's madness. If he can keep going like this, he can thread Mark he's Wallace. He's jumping out, riding this track like almost no one is, hopping stuff where other people are breaking. It will be a Canadian winner here this afternoon, which is incredibly fitting, I would say. Taking oh. that inside. Oh, oh it's it's super smooth. That was fast. Point by back of that second split, though. Hopping steps so he doesn't lose speed. He's got to ride this high, hard out here if he's going to make that time up. One, just over the second now. Oh. Mark rode that middle section super good. We yep. know that there's a second in the bottom here. And he's sprinting hard here. All the way as well. Wow. Mark didn't do a lot wrong. Maybe a little bit messy in that last one. I'm not sure it cost him any time, though. He's oh. still good. He looks strong coming down here. Late breaking into this open bit. Look at him, and he puts up out One of the fastest to be seen on that flat bit, holding that high. He was super quick around that long ride. Second in this last one, the intensity still Inside. there. Some might make a little bit of a mistake there. Oh. 
Jewett's running juniors and elites. Oh my God, how did he do this bottom section, Elliot? That was it, man, he got two seconds, two seconds in like 30 seconds. I cannot believe he, he that. He did it in that open bit, that was incredible. Wow, Late breaks wow, in there. Wow went way outside, held higher than we've seen anyone hold, and then just let it loose into that last wood section. Yeah, you're right. The way he, he was he was visibly quicker around that right, and he still yeah. got a pop out of the right to, to set up even higher than anyone. Higher than it. You have to take so Ooh. much risk. You have to be so committed to not take a foot off there, to I'm not touch breath. the bricks. Okay, Tracy's with him. What a win for that young man. Tracy, over to you. Jacob. I mean, 20 years old, what a run on an insane track, what a win. How does it feel? Uh, it's unreal, I like, was a bit bummed out when I heard Finn wasn't starting, but I got really nervous after that, because I was like, oh, I'm gonna be the last guy to drop. So I just wanted to put a good run down, and I thought I threw it away at the top, double like unclip, and kind of got caught up, but uh, I don't know, I just pushed on, and I'm so happy. I mean, you had us literally on the edge of our seat. It was up and down the whole way, and to take it by over a second is just unbelievable. It must feel amazing, especially on Stevie Smith's tribute track. Yeah, it's just, this track's so good. Big up to the dig crew. They've done such an amazing job, and yeah, I hope it was a good race to watch. Yeah, it was amazing, and good luck for the rest of the week and world champs. Thank you. Thanks, Jacob. There is a young man that you are going to see a lot a more lot of, of oh doing things goodness. that no one else is doing, hopping over that rock just and making it look smooth and turning it around. And we we to saw take the win by over. I'm sorry, Elliot, but to that no. that gap there, one second when he was behind, that's bonkers. We saw we saw the mistake. The right? double like, double, we was, didn't, I didn't see it in his race from being the yeah. replay. Both feet blow out. <laughs> it's the beginning of a steep, steepest part of the whole track. Yeah. Wow. And then he Found the composure. Wow. Okay. That is crazy. That was. Yep. What a fitting end to this Crankworks downhill world tour that was. I mean, we couldn't couldn't have really finished it off any better. Two Canadians on the podium. Good to see Mark Wallace up there. And you know, this whole today has all been about the memory of Stevie yeah. Smith. The 1199 is totally the essence of Stevie Smith. And we've talked about you know the Canadians really being free ride until yeah. Smith came along in 2013 That's and took right. the overall World Cup. And now you know, 10 years later, you're seeing the riders that looked up to right. Stevie. These right. new wave of Canadian downhillers as we look at the King of Crankworks. And there it is. Overall, and it, you, you predicted that right. To Nine. Who Nine points ahead, so it it will come down. I, I, I guarantee it'll come down to the last event of the week between these two riders. It's going to be good for you, and you can catch everything out along. Excuse me, catch all the action all week. We're only at the very start of Crankworx Whistler here, and in the Queen Caroline Buchanan, still a good, mar healthy margin, 199 points back to Martha Gill. And she's one of those riders who wasn't really a downhill rider, so she's made so much progress to be able to ride this 1199 track. Talk to her after a run. She was just like, you know, I'm happy to be there. We got, I want to average some podiums. And you see, like you were talking about, Rob, the Canadian downhill, to, to see how many young kids there are. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And it was always, I always found it mad, really, that there wasn't more Canadian yeah. downhillers even when I was racing. Yeah. Because they got, you know, the mountains, the, the well, sea, really but they're shows, all free ride. That's, that's how it is. It shows what, you know, having a role model, having somebody to yeah. look up to. We talked about that with British Downhill and Steve Pete. There were so many young people, yeah. Josh Bryslin, yeah. like all of these people that come up because they say, if my fellow countrymen can do it, I can do it yeah, too. Yeah, that's right. It's like, a, it's like a nation gains momentum. Yeah. For sure. And if you're talking about momentum right now, then Canada has it in abundance. <laughs> One, two in the overall World Cup with the riders that are both from a stone's throw from here. Well, Elliot, that was an insane Rock Shots downhill. Uh, we haven't seen anything like it. Valentina Hull smashing the women's. Jacob Dewitt taking is the men's. A Canadian winner. So exciting. Yeah. So good to see. And the whole tour has been brilliant. Uh, We've seen yeah. some amazing racing. <laughs> Okay, well, Elliot, thank you for joining me. Thanks for joining us at home. That's it from us on the downhills. But please hang around for the rest of Crankworx Whistler. We'll see you next week.